best of driver skills. The track is designed to simulate desert racing, but uh, sometimes the stadium gets in the way. This racing series still carries the name of its founder, Mickey Thompson, and the excitement starts all over again in 1993 here at Anaheim Stadium. Stay with us for Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing, next on ESPN. And good evening, everybody, from a very wet Southern California. It has been raining most of the afternoon. The track uh, has got a pretty fair soaking, and talk about driver skills. The test on this track tonight. Along with my partner, Mike Galloway, Ken Bruce speaking to you. And, uh, Mike, I guess you can never truly predict the weather, can you? Well, not even in Southern California. Most of the day was beautiful, Ken. The track was great. Had a lot of good lines in it. Everything was wonderful. And then about the middle of the afternoon, the skies opened up, and only moments ago has it quit raining. And the rain continues and continues, and you have to believe that uh, Toyota's dominance this year in the Grand National Sport Truck category, uh, I think, will be tested. There are a lot of guys back this year, Mike, with new equipment, new sponsors, and I think a pretty fair shot at challenging this dominance that Toyota has enjoyed over the last nine and ten years. Well, that's true, Ken. If Toyota has anything to do with it, that won't happen. They've had more test time than anyone, according to Pit Talk. But Danny Thompson has stepped over to a Ford truck. I think the Rough Riders team with Danny is going to be a great improvement. Also, you're going to see some exciting things. The Mirrors, the father and son team, they're working great this afternoon. We saw some trucks that were very, very practice earlier today. You like that pit talk, don't you? Oh, I love it. I know another guy that loves pit talk, Ralph Shaheen. He's our pit reporter, and Ralph is standing by with a couple of guys who statement here on opening night in 1993. The one thing you want to do at the season opening round of any racing series is make your statement. I'm going to be the guy to beat all year long. Last year, 1992, Rod Millen was the man to beat, the reigning champion. What statement do you make here in 93? Well, you know, 92 is behind us, so, you know, we're not really even worried about that now. But 93, it is going to be important to sort of get out there and win. We didn't expect all this rain, so this has changed a few things around. Fortunately, we did a lot of testing in the rain, so the Toyota truck is working real good. For Rick Johnson, his statement was, I'm rookie of the year, but I got to win. He's the big dog in the porch. What do you do? What's your statement? Well, a lot of times you can get caught up in, in the hoopla of the first race and put so much emphasis on it that you basically shatter your, your whole season. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get as, enough, an, as much time as we wanted on the test track because of the rain, but we put in some good times in, in practice, and uh, what I'm going to do is go out there, drive a hard race, not put too much pressure on myself for this race because we have a whole month in between now and San Diego to reset myself. For motocross, it was the same thing. If you don't do it in the first race, you're going to be playing catch-up all year long, and a lot of times you can mess yourself up mentally, so I'm going out for the best finish I can get. Not only are you trying to make a statement, but in doing so, sometimes it's the seasoned veterans that can dig deep and overcome the adrenaline rush to find the way to Victory Circle, and these two are definitely seasoned veterans. Thank you very much, Ralph. Stay dry tonight. We'll hear from Ralph Shaheen throughout the course of the evening. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing is brought to you by... Back at the Big A in Anaheim, we are just about set to go here. Heat race number one, Grand National Sport Trucks. And Mike, uh, all the big names from last year, back out on the track again this year for 1993, including the man that will all be chasing, I'm sure, Rod Millen. He and Ivan Stewart, what a team. Danny Thompson, number nine, and the number seven truck, Rick Johnson. And as we pan back, there's your man. Lined up just before turn number one, and Millen, of course, here in 92, became only the second Grand National Sport Truck driver to win two heat races and the main event. And he'll try to equal that tonight here on a track that looks to be very unforgiving. It's uh, a muddy, muddy night, and our in-car cameras tonight, Mike, should give us some great, great shots. Waiting for the green flag, and that should be momentarily dropping, and we're about to start the 1993 Mickey Thompson Off-Road Racing Series, and we are off. And it's a fair start. And you can see already big decisions having to be made whether to go inside or outside. Mike, uh, again, the track from the start looks like there is some problems with the proper traction. No question about it. These drivers are struggling as they come through this, the first turn. And uh, in the lead, it is Danny Thompson. Danny Thompson in the lead. 
as they cut through what uh, appears to be the end here of lap number one. But, Mike, already we got a problem back in the middle of the track. Well, this track is unforgiving. It, it's a, more of a roller coaster situation where you get out, you do the very best you can, and you try to take the lead. Danny Thompson right now is uh, battling pretty heavily. The, the Dodge making a move on him, but right now Danny's out front. You know he's got to be happy. It's a brand new ride, Ken. Danny Thompson currently leading with Walker Evans right on his tail, and Thompson maintains speed as he comes through that second turn. Walker Evans in the number five truck right on Denny Thompson in the number nine truck one lap down seven to go here in this the first heat race of the night good shot at Danny Thompson he's got better equipment this year he's in a Ford Ranger and, uh, obviously off to a good shot here's the battle for number three and we've got a problem right there we've got a truck on its top and it appears to be Walker Evans who has just turned completely over down at turn number six and the yellow flag is out Ken that's a very tricky situation you and I talked about it earlier there's a set of three jumps there if it's real real tough to hit them and make it over all three of them we haven't seen it done yet well it gets on the inside of McCachran and just kisses the barrier the hydro barrier comes back out in McCachran again the mud's so bad you can't do anything he's just off base he lands sideways there's no place to go momentum carries him over the third one and there he lays upside down Walker Evans back upright we'll have a restart now and uh, it appears that Rod Millett may have made the best progress with Walker Evans uh, misfortune all right we're set to go now and again it's Thompson who takes the lead as they come through turn number two Danny Thompson in the lead with Rob McCachran right on his tail. And again, watching him as he appears to be okay after the flip. Well, the Rough Rider trucks, Ken, are setting one and two, and nothing would make anyone happier in that team. And there you saw Danny in the same problem. That triple jump is really playing havoc on the drivers tonight. Roger Mears comes up and now takes over position number three. But again, it's Thompson's race right now as he takes the lead in his board. McCachran teammate right behind him. And Mears, who appears to be losing a little bit of body molding, is uh, currently riding third. Evan Evans is in truck number 13, the green and white truck, and uh, there you can see McCachran making good use of that as he edges inside. Now, the split. Rob went to the inside. Danny's going to the outside. What's it going to be when they end up in that all-important turn number five? Who's going to be in the lead? It looks like Rob McCachran may take over the lead from Danny Thompson. So using Evan Evans, Rob McCachran has pulled into the lead in front of teammate Danny Thompson. The waning moments of this heat race. And McCachran has stormed to the lead. Rob McCachran driving the Ford hometown of Las Vegas, and he appears to be en route to winning the first heat race of the 1993 season. These boys are out of him at California. They did a lot of changing over the winter. They separated their teams. They went from uh, a single team to a desert team and a stadium team. They think it's going to help the trucks, and they really seem to be doing a great job tonight. The Ford is on its way. Right now, we're looking at a neat set. The Budweiser truck, look at that, Ken. We've got Bob McCachran, Roger Mears, and Junior. Here, one, two, three, with Danny Thompson finishing fourth. There's your winner, Rob McCachran. In the Ford, the winner of heat race number one. Cackman, our winner, Robert, it looked like uh, you took advantage of a little lap traffic to grab the lead. That's right. Uh, we came up on lap traffic there, and I got inside Danny, and uh, that gave me the break I needed to, to put this main event, or actually this first heat race, in the uh, books. Are you looking already to the main event, Rob? I mean, you got that on your mind. Well, I'll tell you, two years ago in Dallas, the track was kind of like this, and we had a good race there, and, and that's all I can think about right now is, you know, is that these BF Goodrich tires working really good. The Ford's running strong. Let's uh, talk a little bit Rob, about the mud. What is the track like? Well, it's it's like a mud bog out there. Uh, all the corners are really muddy. There's a lot of grease out there. A lot of real slimy. The BF Goodrich tires are hooking up really good, as you can see. Rob McEachra, the winner of the heat race tonight in the Grand National Sport Trucks. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Let's go to Ralph in the pits to see what the tire situation is.
Ken, it's very interesting. What we want to do here, the tires, to make them really work, is you want to get your own version of a paddle wheel boat. Here's what I mean. See how the tires are right now? See how the grooves go this way? They're going to come back here, and they're going to cut these blocks this way, across, at an angle this way. Get nice big channels in there, just like they have right here. That way, as this tire turns, it helps pull the truck forward through the mud, just like a paddle wheel boat does in the water. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing. Jack Murphy Stadium, Saturday night. Tickets at Gate F. And among other things here tonight at the Big A in Anaheim, a salute to the greatest oval driver in IndyCar history. Rick Mears was on hand tonight for a special presentation to the Mickey Thompson Entertainment Group. The history of Mickey Thompson goes back to 1979, where a track much like this one here in Anaheim was installed in the L.A. Coliseum. Rick Mears was the winner of the inaugural Mickey Thompson Stadium off-road event in the L.A. Coliseum, only a few weeks after winning his first Indy 500. He won in both the Baja Bug and the Unlimited Single Seaters. Even though Rick is now retired, Mickey Thompson off-road series will always call him one of their own. Mike, an interesting race tonight in uh, heat number two, Grand National Sport Trucks. And uh, I'll tell you what, it was a big race for uh, one particular competitor, Rod Millen, in that number one Toyota. Rod Millen in the lead right there. And you see Evan Evans coming in the way. Can't get around him. At that time, Rick Johnson drives right up on the back door. Can't get any closer than that. Rick dives to the inside, trying to get around Millen, and does for a moment. Millen charges back after they make this turn. They rub a little side and it's all over with from there on out. But Millen takes the checker flag tonight in heat number two. He's all set for the main event. 57,000 plus here tonight in Anaheim sitting through the elements, Mike. You don't believe it's raining. Take a look at the glass behind us. We, we have it. We're dry inside the press box. The great racing fans here in Anaheim sitting outside to watch this first event on the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series. Mike, a wild night of racing, too, through the elements. Oh, it has been absolutely the wildest, Ken, and it started with the first heat race. The main event tonight in the Grand National Sport Truck Competition. Inside the Grand National Sport Truck of Rod Millen, the 92 defending champ here at Anaheim and number one man last year on the sport truck circuit. He right now has to be thinking, I would imagine, like, what better way to start 93 than with a win here in these conditions in Anaheim. He said, he's figuring, there he is, number one truck. He's got to be figuring, if I can drive my Toyota to victory tonight, imagine what I'm going to do on just a clear, fast, dry surface. Let's talk about the difference here. This is an inverted start, and we're using it by virtue of current points uh, so far this season, so far tonight. Fast racers at the back, slower racers at the front. Rick Johnson, not a slower racer, but he sure started in front, and he did not get a good start at all. He is in deep trouble already. We've got traffic in the back. We've got traffic up front. We've got a big pile up as they come through turn number two. But it appears that Roger Mears Sr. in his Budweiser has the lead and then relinquishes it. And as we come down the bottom of turn number five, it all filters out. And here with the lead now in the number seven truck is Rick Johnson. Rick Johnson out of Encinitas, California. And his Chevy truck appears to have taken the lead in hands. Well, look at second and third, the two Toyota. Ivan Stewart has came from the back row. Now row number five, and he has moved up into third place. That's Rod Millen setting in second spot. Here's a shot of Rod. Look at the helmet just moments ago. Absolutely sparkling clean, and now the mud is coming off. Right behind him is the Iron Man Ivan Stewart. Ken, I think we're going to see. Look at this. He's coming to the lead. He's going to the lead, and Millen has just passed him for the lead. Millen, if he can do it on this service, they've got the Toyota set to go another year. And look at Ivan. Ivan is right there also behind Rick. Ivan's going to move for the number two spot if Rick doesn't watch him. Well, Millen would love to win here. He's just from down the road in Newport Beach, and a win here tonight would be sweet. He could drive it right out of the parking lot and home. 
Rick Johnson took a different course. You can see Rick on the left. Here comes Rod on the right. Now what's going to happen? Well, Rick lost a lot of time. But now but Rick Johnson may pass inside on Millen and does and recaptures the lead by taking the inside of that turn. Well, there is Johnson in first in the number two truck, that Toyota driven by none other than the Ironman Ivan Stewart and his teammate Rod Millen who had the lead just a couple of laps ago, now sitting third. He chooses the outside. He'll chase Johnson there and he'll let the Ironman come to the inside. But it's still the race of Rick Johnson, who just regained that lead before. Let's see what happens with Iron Man is really putting some pressure on Rick. There's no bite in this part of the racetrack. Absolutely none. Whoever can handle it, manhandle it around the corners, will come out on top. Rick Johnson that time. Watch Ivan, because he's setting Rick up. He's setting him up to take him in that part of the course. Another lap in the book. Johnson still with the lead. The Iron Man, Ivan Stewart, behind him. And look at what's trailing behind Billings car. It's not the way he brought it to the track tonight. Get some sparks flying by underneath that millet truck. Well, it's nothing, that's nothing really to worry about, just a little exhaust burn off. Again, these trucks, this track is going to get a lot better. Full eight laps to go, and it will be good before the night's over. Not great, but good. And we've got another lead change here as the Iron Man comes up and steals it away from Johnson, bumping as he does so as they go through turn number six. And now the Iron Man, Ivan Stewart, assumes the lead, but just like that, loses it again to Johnson. And just like that, Stewart tries to take it back. But it's Johnson who maintains the lead as his Chevy truck completes yet another lap. The track is coming around. It's coming around quickly. If there's enough time left, we may see Ivan make one more run at it. But in the same breath, Rick Johnson's truck is really handling much better than it was earlier. Right there at the Iron Man, and he is going to try to come back. We've got some problems. Rick Johnson's sitting there. He's looking down, mirrors his truck. He's got to get around Mears's. Ivan is there. This could be the chance. Ivan's going to try to go to the inside. Goes in. Now comes out. Two boys from the Sunshine State dueling it out of the liquid sunshine tonight. Ivan Stewart, second place, Alpine, California. And, of course, uh, it's uh, from Encinitas, California, Rick Johnson in the number seven Chevy. He sees the white flag and knows he is less than one lap now from victory in the main event tonight here in Anaheim. Ivan falling off the pace just a little bit. It could be that the racetrack came to Rick Johnson's truck quicker than it came to Toyota. Ivan goes someplace he hasn't been all night, and that's the far lane. But he had to do something. He couldn't get around Rick Johnson any other place on the racetrack. He's going to try it all now. And now it is Johnson who follows behind Roger Sr. and loses time just a little bit. It allows Ivan to crawl up, and now they're almost bumper to bumper as they head up through the top of turn number seven down to turn number eight the checker flag is out uh -oh. and it's going to be a t-bone through the finish line and it is johnson who crosses first and ivan stewart up on the rail will finish second and mike what a way to end this race stewart up on the railing still going down the rail the winner, Rick Johnson of the main event tonight in the Grand National Sport Truck. He is the man who has made the statement that we talked about at the beginning of our broadcast. He has made the initial statement in this 1993 season. Last lap and it is quite a battle as Ivan comes on the inside of Rick. Now this is for the checkered flag. Rick's in a little bit of trouble, brings it across. Ivan's letting him know he's there. We're just racing for it. Mears crossways. Ivan pushes him sideways across the finish line. There it is. Finish line, it was close, half a bumper apart. Ivan's up on top of the rail. He wants to get that checkered <laughs> flag, so he just drives it down the guardrail all the way to the finish line. And after it was all over, Ivan gets together with the, the winner, Rick Johnson, just a couple of kids playing in the mud. Okay, here we go. See, Toyota believes there's really no difference between racing cars and racing trucks. Wow. See, the cars have advanced aerodynamics that keep the wheels firmly on the ground, which is important. And the trucks, boy, they're up there. The cars have superb handling to steer around the competition, you see. And the trucks, neat. But look, the cars won their championship, and so did the trucks. See, the results are the same. 
Rocky Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a Bud. And by Toyota Motorsports, where technology on a fast track is built into every Toyota. In-car cameras made possible by your friends at Toyota BF Goodrich, American Racing Custom Wheels, and Shell Truck Guard, and Nature's Recipe Pet Food. Barrier Camera, compliments of Dick Sepek and Rancho Suspension. Now, speaking for my partner, Mike Galloway, and for a great job tonight done down at Pit Road by Ralph Shaheen. Ken Bruce speaking to you, saying so long from the Big A in Anaheim, and reminding you that this has been a presentation of Bud Sports in association with ESPN. The 1993 Mickey Thompson Stadium off-road season started in the mud. Rain that's plagued Southern California this winter, and it fell on Anaheim Stadium, turning the track into a mud bog. Vicki Allison looked more like a chocolate sculptor than a Super 1600 driver. But still they raced, and stubborn fans who outlasted the weather were treated to one of those great sport truck finishes in the main event. Rick Johnson and Ivan Stewart, they acted more like two kids playing in the mud than experienced drivers. Now the Mickey Thompson series moves to San Diego. Jack and even though the rain has continued, six vehicle classes are ready to go racing tonight. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing, it's next on ESPN. And hello again, everybody, from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, California, where the rain continues to fall here. I don't know who wrote that song, It Never Rains in Southern California, but it must have been written sometime in September or October because it's been raining nonstop, it seems like, since January. Well, unfortunately for the Mickey Thompson Entertainment Group, this is the second event in a row and only the second time in about eight years that they've had rain. And the track is literally a quagmire. In one 24-hour period, two inches of rain fell in the San Diego area. What's going to be interesting is tires may not be the telling tale tonight, Ken. What may be the telling factor will be whether or not these trucks can first stop because their brakes will be wet and whether or not they can turn into the corners and then get back on the power and try and slog their way through. It's going to test driver and technology tonight, no question about it. We have one race in the books. The point standings now for Grand National Sport Trucks after the Anaheim event and it shows Rob McCachran sitting right on top, but perilously close to second place. Well, yeah, we've got a real dogfight actually brewing. Rob McCachran scored all of his points in the heat races, and then, of course, if you remember, Rick Johnson came back after two dismal performances in the heat races to win in the main event. And then, don't look uh, too far, but Ford winning in the battle for Manufacturers Championship, and that has been a long time coming. Ford has not been in that position for quite a while. It's going to light a fire, to, fire under the Toyota guys, I'm sure. Down along pit row with us tonight is Ralph Shaheen, who's standing by with two guys who had a great finish in Anaheim. Rick Johnson and the Ironman, Ivan Stewart. Ralph. Battles between rivals are always things that make racing interesting, and this is quickly becoming one of the most heated competitions in racing. Ivan Stewart and Rick Johnson. Now, Ivan, this has been your home turf, but it's also his backyard. Can he take it away from you, or do you still have the home court advantage here in San Diego? Well, I think I think that we have a better truck. I sincerely do. Rick's, Rick's a heck of a driver, and he's got good equipment. I think the Toyota truck's working better. The problem we're going to have is it's wet out there. It's muddy. It's sloppy. I think it's going to be an equalizer. So it could be a, a coin toss, but I'll tell you one thing. If he wins, he's going to have to work for it. We have officially gone one year now for Rick Johnson. You have three wins and a rookie title, and this is where it all began. Can you do it here in your second try at your home track? It took Ivan seven attempts to win here in San Diego. Yeah, like Ivan said, is the rain has become the great equalizer. No practice time, no qualifying. We're just we're just going for it at seven o'clock. Um, I think that you might see a mixed crowd here. Some some old motocrossers might be coming and cheering for me, where Ivan's got the experience and the years of truck racing fans behind him. But um, it's anybody's race out there. Like he says, I got to earn it, so I'm ready to work for it. Pretty thrilling finish at the last race in Anaheim between these two, and I think with them racing in front of their home crowd, gentlemen, a little more aggression probably up the sleeves of both of these when we come to that checkered flag here tonight. Mickey Thompson, Stadium Off-Road Racing, Phoenix Sun Devil Stadium, Saturday night, May 1st. Tickets at Dillard's or ASU Box Office. 
Let's look at Jack Murphy Stadium layout here in San Diego for our race tonight. An interesting layout, to say the least. As you come off the starting line, a quick left-hander that takes you down into your major decision for every lap, whether you take the A lane or the B lane. Now, the A lane has three 180-degree turns. It's shorter, but those turns are going to slow you down. The B side, quicker exit points as you don't turn as often, but you've got a longer distance to travel. You rejoin at turn five, actually heading towards each other, and then into the rhythm section. Down to turn six, 180-degree right-hander to a left-hand 180-degree at turn seven. Up over the longest straightaway on the race course, down into a hard, hard left-hander into turn eight that sends you to the finish line and one lap here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Well, we're all set to go here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Heat race number one in the Grand National Sport Trucks. And Marty Reed, one of the great things about being in San Diego are the local guys that get to come home and race in front of the hometown crowd. Well, Ralph Sheen talked to the two of them. Ivan Stewart, there you see him, and Rick Johnson. You know, Ivan got a big monkey off his back last year. There's the in-car shot from Rick Johnson's Chevrolet. Ivan had never won his hometown event till last year. And then at the Supercross... You know, he's basically challenging. He say, hey, you're going to have to take it away from me there, youngster. And uh, the 28-year-old uh, did just that, of course, in round number one. And we'll find out if he can do it again. The thing we need to point out, as you look at the two mirrors on the front row, is that no one has seen this race course until now. There was no practice, no qualifying because of the heavy rain. So they're seeing it just as we're seeing it for the first time. And I'll tell you what, I like our position a lot better yeah. than theirs. Well, there'll be a decision to make as they come up to turn number two. Inside or outside, each particular lane has its own challenge, and we'll see what the decision is here. The first heat race of the night, Grand National Sport Trucks in the hands of the starter, and we are just about set to go. Gary Scheimer, the starter, an eight-lap heat race, and the green flag is down, and we've got racing in San Diego tonight. And immediately, Marty, we can see the track start coming up on these drivers, some of whom choosing that outside, that top lane. The Veers boys go up there first. Well, not really much of a choice. You know, you, you, you sort of get boxed into what you have to do. You can see the difference that uh, the two sections take you. One takes you much shorter, but a lot tighter. Oh, and we talked about there, you saw Walker Evans, and uh, Brian Stewart, his young teammate, get into the uh, barrier there. The secret is going to be able, can you stop and turn these vehicles? Because right now it's so slippery, the brakes are wet, and it's very, very difficult. Up the top of turn seven and back down, down to the final turn, turn eight, and one lap will be in the book. And Roger Senior has the lead as one lap goes in the book here tonight, and he race number one. Immediately on him, and in second place is Brian Stewart, but now the track seems to be coming up a little bit for Beers, who this time elects to go back up on top again to that chicane up through the top of turn number three. Certainly good news up for the Budweiser team, considering how they struggled in that first race. And now the Budweiser team with Rogers Sr. in front, apparently with the lead. Now the man who's made a big gain, there's the number seven of Rick Johnson. For a moment, they appeared to be neck and neck, but not so now, as Roger Sr. pulls away just a little bit, and the body molding coming off the back of Rick Johnson's car and truck as well. Uh, you saw Rick Johnson get bogged down there in the mud. Again, it, it's not the tires aren't important tonight, but uh, as we pointed out at the top of the broadcast, was it, it's more of whether or not you can turn the vehicle and stop the vehicle. Apparently, stopping and turning is still a very big problem for most of these drivers. Rick Johnson has taken the lead on Roger Sr. It's a matter of simply the brakes are wet. They also have a tendency to get clogged with mud. Look at the look at the grill and the radiator. That's another problem as we go on through the night. If a lot of mud builds up in that radiator, the engines can overheat. It could send somebody to the sidelines very quickly. As the mud flies in front of the truck of Rick Johnson, he sees the white flag in front of him, signifying one lap to go. And he has the lead. Right behind him, though, is uh, the number one truck of Rod Millen. Yeah, the 
problem for Rod Millen, he's got two lap vehicles in between him and not a lot of time to try and catch Rick Johnson. In fact, it, it's really Rick's race to lose at this point. And I suppose if you look at strategy, and I'm sure Roger Sr. will, not taking that A lane the first three or four times around probably has cost him the ability to win this race. Well, it certainly didn't help. You know, it, it proved to be the wrong choice. Rick Johnson, our leader, making the turn through number six and coming up through seven. These are relatively quick turns for Johnson, and he is eyeing right now the checkered flag. Rick Johnson, number three in the points, second in heat race number two last week, and now preparing to win this heat race number one here in San Diego tonight. Rick Johnson has won, has taken the checkered flag, and will set himself up in fine fashion for the main event. The off-road racing telecast comes up on Tuesday, April the 20th, right here on ESPN. Check your local listings for the time. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing. It's coming to your town. Act is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. To be competitive on the Mickey Thompson Series, every one of the tire manufacturers bring an arsenal of tires with them to the racetrack. Every track is different, so sometimes it requires a different tire. Now, these are the four tires that BF Goodrich brings with them. They're all available at your local dealerships, by the way. This is their big mud tire, and it varies all the way down to the hard track tire, which is a variation of BF Goodrich's IMSA GTP rain tire. Now, sometimes even those four tires aren't enough and they have to hand groove the tire to specifically meet the needs of this particular truck on a particular day. These are those same four tires that have been hand grooved each time cutting them a little bit different. Joe Sudall is a gentleman for BF Goodrich who is in charge of grooving tires. Now, Joe, I see the way you're grooving it here tonight on your mud tire. How do you decide how to groove a particular tire? Well, it depends on our track conditions. The more muddier it is, the more grooves we'd put in. And most importantly, it all comes down to experience, and Joe Sudall has 10 years of it to help BF Goodrich. Heat race number two, Grand National Sport Trucks. They're lined up and ready to go. Roger Mears Jr. and Ivan Stewart will be at the front of the pack. And so far tonight, the folks up front normally are the ones that are there in victory lane. We'll see if that's the situation in this heat race. I'll tell you what, Ivan Stewart needs a big performance. Are you ready for this? He is currently eighth in driver's point standings after heat race number one. That's the lowest he's been in years. And as they unscramble, there are some takers for that B lane. But the A lane is where Mears chooses, and he maintains the lead as they come up to the top of turn number five. And Mears gets hung up at the top. Oh. And look who takes the lead. A great start for Stewart. As Mears gets hung up. And that is Brian Stewart. He is hung up on the hydro barrier, and that is going to bring out a full course yellow. Take a look at what happens down here in the A lane. Now, that is Roger Mears Jr. He gets hooked onto the hydro barrier. Brian slides into him. Then right behind them, that is Rod Millen. And then climbing on further back is a fourth vehicle. And Brian ends up getting pushed. He tries to power around, and oops, he is in the deep mud, which is going to pull a big yellow on this track. Waiting for the green flag to drop. And there it is. Stewart and Junior off the top, and again Stewart goes to the top, and we've got trouble with Roger Junior on the A-lane. Yeah, you might as well give the lead to Ivan right now. Well, now Junior running into Brian Stewart, but now Ivan Stewart in a battle with Roger Senior, and he sends him up over the barrier. Stewart with the lead. Right on his tail is... Ricky Johnson. Yeah, Rick Johnson, but it's Ivan Stewart who has the lead. Now, this is amazing. Rick Johnson started back in row number four, and we're on board. Look at all the mud flying up in there. All right, as they come up over the first lap, that counts. 
It is the Iron Man with the lead. Rick Johnson in second place. Now, you notice how everybody gave up on the B lane in the first heat race, and now they're going for it because the track is finally starting to come in. He maintains the lead as he comes down to the bottom of turn number oh, six. Big change, good. though. McCachran coming through on the A lane picks up second place from Rick Johnson. He's now in third. Fourth place is Ron Millen. And another problem at the bottom of turn number six is the driver has hit the wall. Meanwhile, back in front, it's Ivan Stewart with McCachran right up. up a lot of passing points. He chooses the A lane as Stewart, completely enamored with that B lane, goes back up top. Could there be a lead change? No. Stewart still with the lead. And, and lengthening it. Stewart looking to put some air between himself and Rob McCachran. Millen in third place, McCachran second. The leader continues to be Stewart. A bit of a jam up though now back at the top of uh, that B lane, but apparently that now has unscrambled. And again, it's still Stewart with the lead. There is McCachran currently riding third, a second in the Ford. Rob McCachran. And there is our leader, Ivan Stewart, who has led right from the start. I think Rick Johnson has dropped a cylinder or cracked a header. He is dropping back. He is now fifth and having a hard time keeping contact with the elite. Ivan Stewart and Rob McCachran. Stewart loving that B lane. Chooses that again. McCachran goes low. One thing and we'll see what happens as they come to the top of turn five. One thing I noticed, Ken, the number seven of Rick Johnson had oil leaking out. A big, huge puddle. He is already off song, uh, and I'm wondering if that motor will last the last three laps. Stewart maintains the lead as he has throughout this race. McCachran challenging now somewhat in oh, second no. place, and now Stewart has flipped on top. Stewart sits on top, and McCachran has taken the lead. What a strange and bizarre turn of events for the Iron Man. I can't remember the last time Ivan Stewart had a lead and gave it up with a mistake. Meanwhile, it is McCachran who was elected to go to the top lane, and he has lost the lead now to Rod Millen. We have, though, a full course yellow out, as they will now attend to Ivan Stewart. We'll see if that lead change will hold. All right, take a look. We'll see what happened to Ivan. I think he just catches a rut as he's into turn number eight. And watch. I've never seen him do this with the lead. And you can see, yes, he does catch a rut. And before you know it, he's up and over. And that's all it takes. There you see the end result. He's on his lid. Giving up the lead, the Iron Man. So now the lead belongs to Rob McCachran. Millen comes low. McCachran goes high. And we'll see which strategy prevails at the top of turn number five. It appears that Millen will take the lead. Rod Millen in his Toyota has taken the lead from McCachran, who elected to go high. Johnson is in second. Roger Sr. third. I am in fourth. And McCachran fifth. But this is going to be Rod Millen's race. No question about it. Barring the unforeseen. Good look at the truck of Rod Millen, wearing the number one, certainly for what he did in 1992. You know, Currently second, but only two points behind in the points race for 93. What's really amazing is Rick Johnson is holding on to second place despite this vehicle sounding like it is running uh, on, uh, you know, just a motor that doesn't have enough gumption to get there. I mean, he, he has either dropped a, a piston or, or something in there because it is totally off song, but he's holding on to second. Decker flag is out. It's going to be Rod Millen who'll take it. Big win for Team Toyota. Millen takes the checker. It'll be Johnson in second place. And a big battle for third. And the Iron Man will take the checker. And what a big comeback for Stewart, who led virtually from the start till he wound up on his head and rallies to take third. In the pit area tonight is a high-pressure washer like this one. The cars get covered with mud inside and out, 
And as Guy Clark is going to show you, they have to stick those high-pressure washers right down in there and try and squirt as much of that mud off as they can. It's a dirty, disgusting job. And by the way, it costs you 75 bucks a night to rent the high-pressure washer. Look at the mud on that truck. You wonder how they set these things up to run in the mud? I mean, I do. Let's go down to the pit road and Ralph Shaheen. How do they do that, Ralph? Well, Ken, you know, this truck actually looks fairly clean to when it just rolled in here. In fact, the mechanics are pulling some 300 pounds of mud off these trucks after every heat race. Now, Ivan, how do you set one of these up? Do you go soft? Do you go hard? What do you do? Well, everything is a compromise. You want a lot of wheel travel and you want tr uh, truck off the ground, obviously, to go through the moguls and the jumps. But yet, when you get it high off the ground, it doesn't corner very well. So everything's a compromise. You get it low as possible and, uh, and uh, to go through the moguls and still get around the corner without tipping over. It's getting a little bit cooler out here tonight. Is that going to affect the way you set the truck up for the main event? No, I, don't, I doubt that. Just track conditions are going to change, and that's what we're going to set up for right now. Now we're going to go out and watch the track and see where the groove is, and if we can get it lower, it'd be better. They want to tip over, obviously, because we're trying to get up out of the moguls and out of the mud. That's where experience and practice comes into play, and the Toyota team is one team that did get some practice in between here and Anaheim. We're lined up for the main event in the Grand National Sport Trucks. Now, the question I think becomes this. Is it going to be this man who has done some major engine repairs since the last heat race? Will it be Rick Johnson tonight? Or will Ivan Stewart, who had such great success in his last heat race until adversity struck and knocked him out, can he duplicate that in the main event? Well, I got to tell you, I have never seen Ivan Stewart roll when he had the lead before without passing having somebody push him over. I don't think he'll do it twice in one night. And he's starting on the front row. Well, the starter has got the green flag. And we are about ready to roll here for the Grand National Sport Truck main event. Roger Sr. and Ivan Stewart side by side in row one. We're off. 12 laps. Zooms to the lead and goes to his favorite lane, the top lane, the B lane, while Roger Sr. opts for the lower A lane. And as they meet at the top of turn number five, Ivan Stewart has the lead. We've got some problems back at the top of that B lane. That's Brian Stewart that got hung up uh, back in the B lane, but uh, the Iron Man takes advantage again. He loves that lane, but I wonder if he saw that uh, the B lane's now got some traffic, and will he make a change here? Because his son, Brian, is blocking the apex of the far corner. negotiate around his son. Anybody, and they're all following. I think if somebody would have taken the A lane, everybody followed the B side. So Ivan's mistake uh, turns out to be everybody's mistake. Well, Ivan continues to lead this race through the bottom of turn number six. Roger Sr. on him. And just a hair behind is Rick Johnson. Now, what, what's this man, Rick Johnson, going to do next time around? What is Ivan going to do this time around? Now they know that Brian is sitting there and that they have to go slower. Well, this is really interesting because, remember, until last year, Ivan Stewart couldn't buy a victory here in San Diego. He won the main event here last year and uh, went on to finish second in the point stage behind his teammate, Rod Millen. He needs this win. As you look at second place, Roger Beer Sr., this is the best Rogers run all night long, but Ivan needs this win because he's tied for sixth in the point. Oh, and Rob McCachran goes into the hydro barrier. We've got McCachran in the hydro barrier trying to back out. He got caught in that rut, and McCaffrey, though, okay and back out and racing. Does not affect the leader, Stewart. Does not affect second place, Roger Sr. on him. And continuing in third is Rick Johnson. There is the Iron Man, Ivan Stewart. Tell you what, watch Ivan coming through these corners now. Notice how he doesn't slide out there. If we get a chance to see Rick Johnson in some of those same positions, he's really going all over the place. Now watch Ricky right here coming through this corner. Now, look, he had to get all the way down to a full stop, and he still ended up fishtailing. So it gives you an idea why Ivan is pulling out this big lead over Roger Mears and Rick Johnson. Ivan Stewart with the lead. There he is in the Toyota number two. 
Roger Sr. in second, Rick Johnson in third. I think I may have discovered another problem for Rick Johnson. He may have done the same thing he did that he raced number two. It sounds like his engine is off song. He may have dropped another cylinder. Johnson the winner in the main in Anaheim. Right now, the best he can do is third. It's either Rick Johnson's truck or Rob McCaffrey's. One of them, with all this noise, it's awfully hard to tell the difference, but one of them has uh, definitely got a problem. Coming up on two laps to go. Ivan Stewart has less than two laps to go. He's the leader. Second place belongs to Roger Sr. Third place belongs to Rick Johnson. Stewart battling the track. And we've got a problem at the bottom of turn number six. As a matter of fact, we've got a couple of trucks buried. Looks that's, like... Uh, that's Walker Evans on top of Rob McCaffrey. They used to be teammates years ago. Now one is trying to take a piggyback right on the other. Still, no yellow caution. Everything remains as is. The white flag is about to come out for Ivan Stewart. He sees it. He's got it. Oh, I don't know if you saw that, but Ivan almost went up on the bicycle again in the very spot where he went over and he raced number two. Roger Sr. second, Rick Johnson is third. Ivan Stewart now negotiating around lap traffic, negotiating around, I believe that's Danny Thompson, now through the rhythm section and trying to avoid, and he has to really do some driving to avoid Venom, the Venable Racing Teams, Rob McCachran, who had backed up. He lost part of his side molding. Looked like he lost the door. He still has the lead. He still sees the checker flag. It's out. The Iron Man's going to win in San Diego for the second year in a row. Second place belongs to Roger Sr. Third place goes to Rick Johnson. But it's the Iron Man who wins it here in San Diego. He'll need a new door. He'll gladly take that for the trophy tonight. Ivan, I got to tell you, win number 15 of your career in Grand National Sport Trucks and uh, two years in a row here, uh, and you needed this one. You realized at the end of heat race number one, you were eighth in points. Oh, Marty, it was horrible. I had a malfunction of my goggles, and the roll-offs we were, we were using jammed, and I couldn't see anything, so I kind of drove that first race by Braille. And in the, mat, the second one, I lost, I don't know, lost concentration and tipped the stilly thing over at... Uh, I was so mad at myself. I said, boy, i got to win the main now, I tell you. Take a look at the monitor. This had to be a frightening moment for you. Walker backing up into you. Oh, I saw him coming. I thought, oh, I didn't know it was Walker or Brian. I said, please don't back into me and put me out now. And boom, he got me. But it wasn't too bad. I was afraid he was going to damage the steering or something, but it really didn't hurt anything. Well, I, I, and we talked about it right before the start of the race. I, I have only ever seen you roll your truck once in your career in the lead, and that was heat race number two. I knew you wouldn't do it twice. Oh, no, no I was going to do it twice, Marty, I guarantee you. That was so, that was a mistake. Uh, the truck performed fantastic. The BF Goodrich again. Well, uh, all the team, great. Uh, just great to be here, Marty. You rebounded nicely. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers with that fresh, pure, natural taste. Nothing beats a Bud. And by Toyota Motorsports, where technology on a fast track is built into every Toyota. In-car cameras made possible by your friends at Chevrolet, American Racing Custom Wheels, and Nature Recipe Pet Food. Barrier camera compliments of Dick Cepec in Rancho Suspension. Ken Brew saying so long from San Diego and reminding you that this has been a presentation of Bud Sports in association with ESPN. So long, everybody. There are three drivers on the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series that won't leave each other alone. Rick Johnson, who drives for Chevrolet, decided at the L.A. Coliseum last year that Rod Millen, who drives for Toyota, will have to learn to share victory circle with a rookie. This year, Ivan Stewart, who also drives for Toyota, decided that he would retake the main event victories that he had given up in recent months. And he decided to start in the mud in San Diego just a month ago. So now the series comes indoors to the Kingdom in Seattle, and Rod and Rick and Ivan and their Chevys and Toyotas will continue the points battle that has become the closest in the history of Mickey Thompson off-road racing. And we'll bring it all to you next on ESPN.
When the sun is out, it is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. The sun's out today. It's located next to the Puget Sound and right in the heart of the Pacific Northwest. Seattle, Washington is also the site of stop number three on the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Chamberlain. Say hi to my partner, Ralph Shaheen. We're glad you could be with us on ESPN. Ralph, a couple of developing stories here. This is really the first time that these racers and drivers will get the chance to really put the pedal to the metal and see what their machines are made of because in Anaheim and San Diego, sloppy, wet, muddy courses, they couldn't let it go. But tonight, we're indoors. Everything goes. That's exactly right, Mike. As you take a look at the driver's point standings, you can see the tremendous battle we have brewing here. Rod Millen and the Toyota, just one point separating him and the Chevy driver, Rick Johnson. Should be a tremendous fight to the finish here tonight. Now, take a look at the manufacturer's point standings. There you see Toyota with a 41-point lead over Ford. Ford has got some new things in their suspension. Rod McCachron got the fastest time in qualifying here tonight. We should see that gap close up a little bit here tonight. You know, Ralph, in my uh, six or seven years of doing this racing series, I have never seen the points so tight at the top. What does that mean? Are the manufacturers really putting all their technology and efforts into this racing? They really did work hard at it in the winter months. The crews getting on those trucks, trying to come up with some new things to get these cars to work even faster around these racetracks. And I think tonight with this harder surface, we'll finally see who's got what to strut here tonight. They've been waiting a long time to let it go. And Seattle is the city that they're going to finally, as, as Ralph said, strut their cars and all the racing skills. Well, you know, it's more than racing here tonight. It is kind of a family affair. And on that note, we'll check in for the first time with our pit reporter, Mike Galloway. Mickey Thompson off-road stadium racing is truly a family sport. And there's no bigger family than the Mears gang. Roger, is it a family reunion every time you go off-road racing? <laughs> well, just about. I mean, uh, you know, we've done this so long, and all of us, are, our whole family, have raced for, for so long and together that it just feels like a regular deal. I mean, we spend a lot of time together at home, but when it comes time to go racing, that's when we really get together. Junior, what's it like every time you go out on the racetrack, there's Dad right beside you. Is that a hindrance or a help? Oh, it's great. We just have we have, have a whole lot of fun with it. Uh, get out there, bump a few doors. We have great stories when we come home and talk about them. We just have a lot of fun with it. it I think it helps more than anything. The way it may hurt at all is we give maybe each other that extra little inch but that we don't give the other competitors. But other than that, an inch isn't much. You're kind of in the same boat Junior's in is because every time you go on a racetrack, you got kin folks right beside you. Is that a help or a hindrance? Uh, it's uh, sometimes it could be a help and sometimes be a hindrance. It's uh, like uh, like you said. I mean, you like to give each other that little inch, but then again, it's the race, and you'd like to be out there in front, right, right out there in front of them. But it it's good and it uh, gets your blood pumping a little bit better. So, CJ, would it be better if you didn't race with family than racing with family? Oh no, I love racing with my family. In fact, I mean, I like racing with my family because it makes you want to go harder because when you come home, you get the, you get, you don't want to go, oh no, Clint beat me or something like that. You know, you want to be right up on them, right with them. So Mike, with all the action going on here tonight, it's going to be interesting to watch the Mears family. Home plate. At turn one, the competitors have to choose between the A or B lanes. The longer B lane has more jumps but higher speeds. Although shorter, the A lane, with its very tight corners, will slow the racers down. Face to face at turn three, through the rhythm section to turn four. A few more bumps and one big jump complete a lap at Seattle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, enough talk. Let's get to racing in Seattle, Washington. Mike Chamberlain, Ralph Shaheen, and we're just about set for the Grand National Sport Trucks. This is heat race number one. And you might set up this one for us, Ralph, because on the very front row, Evan Evans, who is a story within himself, sitting next to Danny Thompson, the son of the founder of this entire circuit, Mickey Thompson. Well, poor Evan Evans is lucky just to be here tonight, Mike. He was hit by a car earlier this week while out running around with his girlfriend, and luckily Evan escaped without injury, and he's just happy to be here, if you, if you know what we're saying there. All right, it's going to get interesting right off the bat. They're going to make a hard left-hand turn, what would normally be the home plate for the Seattle Mariners and right away Ralph they're gonna have to make a quick decision you're gonna go inside or outside so it's gonna get interesting very fast and we are off and at it the Grand National Sport Trucks heat race number one and Ralph they split almost identical side by side Evan Evans has gone from first to last in one turn yeah he sure has and a lot of the drivers were telling us earlier they thought the outside lane was gonna be 
the way to go. Let's see. Here we come for the first time, and it looks like the inside lane was the one that worked out. That's Brian Stewart, your leader, as we come around to complete the first lap. But look at Ivan Stewart working his way through the field. Roger Mears closing in in a hurry, and we told you that Ivan Stewart was coming, and look who is right behind that group. It is the Ironman. And one lap under our belt here. Stewart uses the inside lane, and boy, does this make for an interesting night of racing. A lot of uh, racing psychology going on on which lane you use. We can see Danny Thompson in the Ford has moved himself into a fine second place effort as we had a little problem. You can see at the back of the screen, Rob McCaffrey got hung up. He clears himself and look at the challenge that Danny Thompson puts on here. Oh he no! Spins Brian he sideways and gives him a love tap and Brian Stewart watching the rest of the field out the front windshield right now and that could have been a big move for this little Dodge racing team. Unfortunately, the Dodge of Brian Stewart goes around and now it's the Ford of Danny Thompson out in front of the Rough Riders and see Evan Evans up on the hydro barrier there. He is hung up on the hydro right now. Let's see how this one... And we have got fire coming out of the back of Roger Mears' truck. And it's Thompson takes a lead. We're going to have a full course yellow right now. For one thing, we've got Evan Evans on the hydro barrier. We've got flames coming out the back of Roger Mears' truck. And he gets tapped from behind by Rick Johnson. Oh, and again, right in front of us. This is goofy, folks. I got to tell you, this is downright goofy. we got flames coming out and Rick Johnson eating those flames right now. As you can see, Brian Stewart got together with Danny Thompson. Just a little bit of a love tap, but it was right as he went into the air. So he had no control over the track. He got around on him in midair, and that was it. Brian Stewart goes to the hydro barrier, and that man, Danny Thompson, goes to the front to the heat. Roger Mears, ladies and gentlemen, has been asked to leave the track because of that fire coming out the back of his pickup truck, and he is not happy. You can see him pounding his steering wheel, and he scooted off this course in a hurry. He's not happy. They put the fire out. I think he, he felt that, hey, the deed was done. We corrected it. Let's start racing, and look at this. He is not happy at all. And I got it. You know, Mike, I, I have a hard time disagreeing with Roger Mears and his frustration. You would think once the fire is out, it looks like all chances of the flames were gone. I think it probably had something to do with the uh, the banners that were dragging on the back too that was aggravating the situation and you figure once the fire is out and everything is okay he should at least be able to start at the back of the pack not only that but he was running in second place when they told him to take a hike so 44 year old roger mears out of bakersfield california becomes a spectator all right, the man in the yellow jumpsuit in front of all the racers is Jerry Stansberry. He oversees all the track operations. He's the man that designs and builds the course, and you can hear him revving up. The RPMs are high pitch, and we're off and at it again. Danny Thompson in the lead, Ivan Stewart in second place. Rick Johnson spins in third place, and he's going to drop back to second to last. But right now, Danny Thompson is going to be the man on the point as he'll come eyeball to eyeball with the Iron Man, Ivan Stewart. Boy, that was just what Danny Thompson wanted to see, but it gave him a bit of a gap, but he lost it right away because that little Toyota is so fast. And Ivan Stewart really hustled it through the corners. Now he's challenging. He's got that inside line. Once Ivan Stewart got back to the inside here as we set up for the split again. He made up a lot of ground the last time. This time, Mike, he might be able to come out with the lead. That little Toyota works well in that tight section. There's a nice wide shot to get the feel for how they can split the field and literally go to opposite ends of this indoor arena. Let's see how it comes out. Out. Ivan doing a lot of steady spinning on there. They go nose to nose through the whoop de do the rhythm section, and Danny Thompson finds the horsepower to pull it out. And look at Ivan right on his tail. This is racing at its best, Ralph. Oh, uh, you know, Mickey Thompson had a dream about this series, and we're seeing it here tonight unfold in real life. This is exactly oh, what they had in mind. Ivan, Ivan Stewart spun out, and he's going to have to go the far way out. Rob McCackard has moved into second place, and Danny Thompson, it is his way's race to take it home right now. I tell you, that. That was a costly mistake by a veteran driver, Ivan Stewart. Simply spun out in turn number two. Rod Dillon is running in third place, but this could be a very, very big win for uh, Danny Thompson. The white flag is out, one lap to go, and the man that lists his age as 30-something is on the point with a chance to drive it all home in heat race number one. Well, this is exactly what Danny Thompson wants to see as we have a problem with Roger Mears Jr.'s truck, and it looks like a problem for Rob McCaffrey as well, as the checkered flag gets set to wave for Danny Thompson, he 
he'll take home the first. Oh, maybe not oh. as he almost dips it over there. Millen comes along second place. And a nice win for Danny Thompson, his first one of the year. And he says hello to his new associate sponsor for this team, halfway in fine fashion. Way to go, Danny Thompson out of Huntington Beach, California, the winner of heat race number one, the Grand National Sport Truck. Let's go down to the Red Hot Pits right now. Mike Galloway there. And, Mike, you've got a lot to talk about. I'm sure Roger Mears was fuming. He was almost looked like he came to punches with some of the officials back there. Tell us what you know with Roger Mears. Well, at this time, Mike, all we know is Roger Jr. came to me a moment ago and said, this isn't a good time to talk to my dad. We're loading up and going home. But as we were waiting to cut away back to you, the MTEG officials are down here in the pits. They're underneath Roger's truck looking at what's on fire. But the last word I had, Mike, is the Mearses are going home for this evening. They're through. If there's anything different, I'll get back to you. Okay, because the word we got from the people here was that once you are assisted on the racetrack, you must leave. And Roger didn't leave. He came back. So that was violation number two. So we're, we're kind of in a standby situation. You're looking down on the Budweiser crew and the cars, and the Mears people could well be on their way up I-5 and heading back home to Bakersfield. In the kingdom, the pits are inside. The crowd gets to watch the madness that happens off the track as the crews get the vehicles ready for the next heat. And the drivers, they can watch how the other classes are handling the dirt track. At a Seattle Mariners game, this might not be the best seat in the house. This might be a cheap seat. But here at Mickey Thompson Off-Road, believe me, this is the best seat in the house. These are the anxious moments for these drivers as they bring the Grand National Sport Trucks to the line in heat race number two. We're just about set to go. And the story of Roger Mears is still a little bit disheartening, I think, to a lot of people. Yeah, the report out of the pits from Mike Galloway. There you see Roger Mears Sr. sitting on the row, on the front row, which you would actually think would be an advantage. That is where they set him. That is a uh, penalty. If he had started in the back, he would have been able to earn passing points. He will not be able to get the maximum amount of points here tonight if he wins this heat. He will, however, lead the start. All right. These piston pumping, powerful pickup trucks are working it over right now at the Seattle Kingdom. Let's watch Roger Mears. You know he's still a little bit hot under the collar as he brings that Budweiser truck into the corner and he gets a little bit of a love tap on the side, throws a ton of dirt behind him. We got Budweiser trucks running in first and second place right now. That's his son, Roger Mears Jr., who sits in second place and holding on to third is Brian Stewart. Fourth is Rick Johnson and look at how those Budweiser Conoco trucks are really taking flight here. Down the backside, Rick Johnson will go with them. Brian Stewart will take Ivan Stewart, his father, with him. So we got the father-son battle going on right now. They'll go to the inside. Now here's the Mears gang working their way into the rhythm section. And Rick Johnson now really starts to move through the field. RJ challenges Brian Stewart for third as we come onto the home straightaway. All in all, now, we have got a super start underway here. All the cars very competitive, nobody really lagging behind as 44-year-old Roger Mears continues to lead the way and they split the lanes once again. Now RJ, Rick Johnson Johnson in the Chevy truck hesitated for a second. He thought he was going to go to the inside with Brian Stewart, but then he got back on the throttle and went to the outside. Let's see how much ground he makes him back up, though. And he's able to come right back into with Brian Stewart, so he didn't really lose too much time. In fact, he's going to maybe take over third. Yes, he is. Brian Stewart spinning in the last quarter as we watched Roger Mears Sr. hold on to the lead. So Rick moves officially into third place right now. As Roger Mears, 44 years of age, out of Bakersfield, California, his brother, you well know him, Rick Mears, the Indy car driver, but it's Roger on the point and in control, stop number three of the Mickey Thompson Off-Road Series. Tonight, we come to you from the Kingdome in Seattle. Mike Chamberlain, Ralph Shaheen, Mike Galloway, so glad you could be with us. These trucks are capable of speeds of up to 125 miles an hour. They will not reach it here tonight, but they don't come cheap. They can run you up to $200,000 one of these trucks online. That's the battle for second and third that we just watched split. That was Roger Mears Jr. in the six and Rick Johnson in the Chevy truck. Their senior, he's out in front and he's running just the way he was in that first game. That's what really frustrated him. He knew he had a very strong truck here tonight and although he's out front, as we see that battle for second and what a good one it is, Mike. Rick Johnson has taken second place away. I'll take it back. Roger Mears Jr. steps in and takes it right back from Rick Johnson. This is tremendous is racing, Grand National Sport Truck Racing at its finest. If it stays like this, this battle 
battle for second is really going to be determined on who gets the best drive on that last lap. Rick Johnson and Roger Mears Jr. really are running two evenly matched trucks here right now. And it's going to come down to who gets the best drive on the last corner with these two. And once again, Johnson steps in, but this is where Mears makes that nice little inside move and then punches it down the back straightaway. He may get the inside on him. Oh! They are bumping and grinding around the kingdom. Rick Johnson refuses to give up any dirt and maintains second place. Meanwhile, the leader up front is that number four Budweiser truck of Roger Mears Sr., 44 years of age. That is an unbelievable story, and I'll tell you why for a couple of reasons. Started racing stock cars back in 1957. The white flag comes out. His dad bought him his first car in 85. He's been racing ever since. He's the leader here in Seattle tonight. Well, Rick Johnson has moved himself solidly into second. Roger Mears Jr. bobbled on that last lap, and that allowed RJ to pull away. And there you see Roger Mears Sr. He is still very solid up front and should be able to bring that Budweiser Conoco track home for the win here in heat number two. He's worked in the rhythm section, the whoop de doos He took all of that anger that he had bent up inside him and put it to the racing test here. And he walks away with the win in heat race number two. Rick Johnson will finish second in the Chevy Thunder truck. Roger Mears Jr. will finish third. Great racing, folks, from the kingdom. Well, this was the battle for second place, and it was a tremendous fight. Rick Johnson in the white Chevy truck, and at the top of your screen, you'll see the number six Budweiser Conoco machine of Roger Mears Jr. Look at this fight. No need to explain a whole lot outside of the fact that Rick Johnson got a great drive off the corner. They came together, bump, swap, paint, everything you could do. RJ got the advantage. He held on for second place. Mickey Thompson, Stadium Off-Road Racing, Phoenix Sun Devil Stadium, Saturday night, May 1st. Tickets at Dillard's or ASU Box Office. So basically, Ralph, what he did was he channeled all that frustration, all that anger, into driving a good heat race in heat race number two. So now the question is the main event. Well, Roger Mears has been strong all night long. Even though he was knocked out of heat number one, he was one of the trucks to beat there. I think Roger Mears Sr., He's going to be the guy you got to watch out for in this main event here tonight. All right. Well, Ralph Shaheen be a fortune teller. We'll find out as we get ready for the main event of the Grand National Sport Truck. All right, folks, get ready for the showdown in Seattle. This is the main event, the Grand National Sport Trucks. The reason that a lot of people showed up, 32,000 here tonight, not too many have left because they stay to watch the big boys off-road stadium race. So let's talk about the front row. There is Danny Thompson. He is the son of the founder of this entire circuit, Vicky Thompson. The guy who won heat number one. And you know how he gets in shape for this, Mike? He trains by trails riding on his motocross machine. And you know who his partner is? Danny and Guy the famous IndyCar and sports car driver. Him and the Flying Hawaiian go out and they go riding every day. And that's how Danny Thompson gets in shape to compete the Grand National Trucks. <laughs> All right, we're just about set to race. Jerry Stansbury says you've got the green light. Mike Chamberlain, Ralph Shaheen, and millions of dollars of machinery hit the line. Danny Thompson, Roger Mears, split lanes, and there was a lot of bumping and grinding. Ricky Johnson is taken out. He is backwards in the back of the back. And he's going to have to turn himself around, and Harris is going to go the long way around. Boy, he's going to have a lot of ground to make up, Mike, but there's the battle up front, and your leader is going to be Roger Mears Sr., but he's got Danny Thompson and his teammate Rob McEachern coming after him. Roger Mears, 44 years of age started racing stock cars back in 1957, and he's got the lead right now. A couple of Fords trying to give him some trouble in the near lane. What a night this could be for Roger Mears. If you think back to heat race number one, he was taken out of the race. He was mad. He was furious. Came back to win heat race number two and has the lead in the main event. But well, these Fords look tough. Look at Danny Thompson come right after him. And there is Ron Millen, the Toyota, sneaking third place away from Ron McEachern. Now remember, those four trucks are running those new nine-brake shocks. They're 
pounds lighter now on the front ends of those trucks. By the time we get to Phoenix, they'll have the same truck to the rear end of the truck, and the Fords will be 150 pounds lighter and much more competitive than they are here tonight. Well, Rod Miller doing some slipping and sliding on the far side of that course right there. Oh, they get together coming out of turn three, and McCaffrey bangs with Millen as we see Danny Thompson bounding into the side of Roger Beers Sr. And Danny Thompson letting Beers know that he is in within striking distance right now. They split the lanes one more time. You're watching the Grand National Sport Truck. Stop number three on the Mickey Thompson circuit. Mike Chamberlain, Ralph Shane, Mike Calloway. So glad you're joining us tonight on ESPN. Next up, Tempe, Arizona, Sun Devil Stadium. Well, Roger likes to strut that horsepower down the back stretch, and it really helped him there. It, it pulled a big gap between him and Danny Thompson that time. Roger Mears stepped into a race car for the first time ever at age five, and it was a love at first bite. He fit into the dirt, and he knew that it was for him. He's been racing, he's now 44 years of age, racing over some 30-odd years on the professional level. As you see Roger Mears working his way through turn number three. See how the front tires are kind of bowed out? They kind of go away from the truck. The reason why they do that is so that when the truck goes through the corners like that, if the tire will roll over and get a better contact patch with the rubber on the dirt. Now you see that tire stands up as he rolls through that corner. He kind of straightens back up. He gets a better drive out of the corner. All the teams will do that. That's how they make these Grand National trucks handle so well in these stadiums. I'll tell you what, I'm keeping my eye on that number one Toyota truck of Rod Millen, the overall series champion from last year. He is actually sitting in great position, has moved ahead in points by a couple of handful here tonight, and he figures into this as he runs in third place right now behind Danny Thompson, Thompson trailing Mears Sr. White flag is out. This is the final lap, and Roger Mears Sr. is not even being challenged at this point. He is flying over the backstretch. He's the far car, the red Budweiser car. There he is. Good tight shot. He'll do a quick little single jump, a hard right-hand turn, and then he will work the rhythm section. They'll take these with a good RPM. Maybe double jump him. Watch him as he comes off. And yes, double jumps and a hard left-hand turn. And what a story it is. What a night for Roger Mir. Furious at the beginning of the night. He is a jubilant racer at the end, winning the main event in Seattle, the Kingdom. A big night for Roger Mir. watching ESPN, the Total Sports Network. <laughs> we couldn't be happier. I'm so happy for the for my team, the Roger Mears team and, and Budweiser, Yokohama and Bosch. I'll tell you, we're just, we couldn't be happier. We really needed this, and we love it. Hey, Roger, now, your truck was strong all night long. Did you find something between uh, San Diego and here? Are we going to see more of this up front? Yeah, we did, and uh, that's something we're really happy about. We've been doing a lot of tests, and we run uh, 250 laps at our test track between the last race. And really, uh, testing really pays off, obviously. It's running really good. Do you want to tell us what the secret was? Uh, just fine-tuning. I mean, just playing with the shocks and playing with suspension mainly. Well, congratulations. It was a fine win. Thank you. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers with that fresh, pure, natural taste. Nothing beats a bud. And by Toyota Motorsports, where technology on a fast track is built into every Toyota. And by Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. In-car cameras made possible by your friends at American Racing Custom Wheels and Nature's Recipe Pet Food. Barrier camera complements a Dick CPEC and Rancho suspension. For Mike Galloway, Ralph Shaheen, I'm Mike Chamberlain. This has been a presentation of Bud Sports in association with ESPN. Bye-bye, everybody. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing is about to enter its fourth stadium in 1993. And the drivers in the Grand National Sport Truck class won't let any one of their members steal the show. Last year's rookie and this year's sensation, Rick Johnson, drove his Chevrolet to a win in Anaheim and in the mud. Ivan Stewart took his Toyota across the line first in his hometown, San Diego, right in the middle of Jack Murphy Stadium. 
Then Roger Mears, after some controversy, made it clear that his Bud Nissan was ready to be a major player this year. Now the Stadium Off-Road Series comes here to the Valley of the Sun, Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, where dry conditions will let drivers, tires, and engines air it out as we present round four of Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing. It's next on ESPN. the desert tonight in the greater Phoenix area and that includes Tempe Arizona the home of Arizona State University it is hot it is dry and that ought to make for a fast track here at Sun Devil Stadium tonight and hello again everybody along with Marty Reed Ken Bruce speaking to you and uh, Marty here we are at the fourth event this year on the Mickey Thompson circuit we have not had one repeat winner no in stadium trucks the Grand National Sport Trucks it has been a dogfight all year long take a look at the manufacturers championship challenge it's going on between Toyota Ford and Nissan and Dodge. Right now, those are the top four teams, and look how close it is. Everybody 224 or better in the top three. When you get to the driver standings, it gets even more interesting. Take a look at the top spot with Rod Millen. He is the one man out of the three winners so far this year who hasn't won. He's looking for his first victory on top by seven points over Rick Johnson, Rob McCachron in third, Roger Mears in fourth place. And the guy that surprises me is Ivan Stewart in sixth place. I think a lot of people are shocked that the Iron man has had so much trouble so far this season but standing by with Ivan down along pit road is our Ralph Shaheen who might have some insight into Ivan's troubles Ralph Ken Ivan Stewart is the Iron Man but he's a little bit sore this afternoon now Ivan what happened to you in that testing incident and how sore are you really well I bruised some ribs we built a new test track up in Camarillo and we had some great big ditches out there and and I could get across them flat out, but I, at the end I had to break to make the corner and, and come down and just bruise some ribs. So I'm a little tender. I'm uh, I'm not quite as uh, as uh, going quite as hard as I as I could, but not bad. We're all right. We qualified for the Toyotas feel good. Uh, look for one of them trucks in Winter Circle tonight. One other thing for you that's a little interesting here tonight is your sixth in points. And that's the farthest down you've ever been. Usually it's no worse than third. How are you dealing with this new strategy that you've got to come up with now? And what is it? Well, we're fortunate that Rod's had a couple of good races and I've had a couple of bad ones. So you're right that I've never had a, in the 11 years I've been racing with the Mickey Thompson Entertainment Group, have I been worse than third? Just some bad races, some, some penalties are getting me. They've, uh, Rick Johnson, I got tied up a couple of times. Penalties more than anything, Ralph. Just got to be real careful of penalties. This could be a classic Iron Man type of night. He's sore, but he might find his way to Victory Circle, Ken. Okay, thank you, Ralph. It'll be warm down there, I'm sure, where he is tonight. It's not what you imagined. Forget what you expected. Transport yourself into a world like no other. Sit here and experience the all-out thrill of stadium off-road racing. It's fast-paced action. It's slam-bang excitement. It's the high-flying fun of racing's most spectacular show. It's Mickey Thompson Off-Road Grand Prix. Rice Stadium, Saturday night, June 26th. Tickets at Smith Ticks, 1-800-795-7708. Coming off the starting line, you'll notice we take a hard left 90-degree turn into the A and B lane choice. B lane has been quicker through practice and qualifying. It's a longer version as far as the outside goes, but seems to be quicker because as you go through the A lane, you've got a 180 degree end down at turn 3A and that seems to be hanging some people up. You empty back in at turn 4A and B and that puts you right into the rhythm section and look out for that second jump on the back end of that because it has been high centering several vehicles through practice and qualifying. Turn 5 is a big 180 degree sweeper to the left which brings you back over the finish line jump and that's one tour here in Tempe, Arizona at Sun Devil Stadium. And welcome back to Sun Devil Stadium in Phoenix, Arizona. More properly put, I guess, Tempe, but the bottom line is, Marty, we've reached the warm part of the schedule. Yeah, temperature today reaching 97 degrees, although now with the uh, sun setting off into the distance, cooling off a little bit into the 80s. <laughs> Race is in the hands of Gary Scheimer. He's in the box in the upper right-hand corner, and we are just about set to go. We are off. Now, Ruby 
interesting to see the decisions now, lane A or lane B, and already we see the majority of the trucks taking that high shoot. Yeah, lane B is the choice. Oh, Ivan gets uh, written up onto the hydro barrier, but uh, salvages it. And now it'll be interesting. We'll get a good idea which lane is quicker. Boy, I'll tell you, it looks almost dead even. It sure does, and as they come through the rhythm section for the first time, Roger Sear Sr. has taken the lead with one lap in the bag. So, Roger Sr. picking up where he left off in Seattle has zoomed to the front here in the first heat race of the evening. And Mears Jr. is right behind Dad. Now, Sr. took the A lane, and Jr. took the B lane. So, now we'll get a good idea between the two Nissans. Roger Mears Sr., who took the truck out for practice laps 250, before that event in Seattle, got the suspension and the shocks dialed in, and apparently it's carried over a win in Seattle, and now a lead that is becoming bigger and bigger as this first heat race progresses tonight. Rob McCachran has moved into third place. In fact, he's battling Junior right now for second and will take the position. McCachran and Roger Junior in the battle for second. There you see the leader, Roger Senior. McCachran and Roger Junior in the battle for this second place. But now we see the split almost 50-50 now between the A and the B lanes. That is Rick Johnson hot on the tail of Rob McCaffrey, Ford versus Chevy. Both of them on BF Goodrich tires. And Roger see that we've got some trouble at the barrier at the uh, just through lane number turn number three. We've got a big pile up. Apparently right now no caution flag. Yes, caution is out here as they uh, about halfway home in heat race number one. Take a look back at the start of the race. Watch how things get tight right into this A-B lane choice. Notice that Walker Evans wanted that B side. That was quicker. And look what ends up happening. Ivan Stewart, Rob McCaffrey battling for position. Almost, almost take out Roger Mears. And then Ivan does get hung up on the Hydra barrier. And we're off on the restart. And again, a fair split of lane A and lane B. It's Roger Sr. who zooms to the lead, and Roger Jr. right there with him. They'll meet at the top of turn number four and see who gets the lead. Father or son, looks like Dad's going to get it. Well, he had a little hang-up on the Hydra Bear, but you're right. He's coming. Oh, and he's oh, getting pushed and up over. And he actually T-bones his son, but they're both okay. Roger Sr. and Jr. continue racing. Well, he got a little assist there from Rob McCaffrey. McCaffrey being very bold here. But it's Sr. who takes the lead. Jr. zooming in to second place. Oh, and then Jr. goes up on the bicycle again. Got a little nudge from McCaffrey. I'm wondering if uh, Rough Driving is going to take a look at this. It'll be interesting to see if they hand down any penalties. In the moment, Senior with the lead. McCaffrey on his heels, and as he makes the turn, now we'll come up to turn number four, as we'll put three laps into the book here in heat race number one. Roger Mears Senior certainly has come on here in the last event and a half. And he has take a look inside with the uh, Ivan Stewart on his left. Notice the steering wheel. Looks like it's a little loose in there. Or a little bent. But I'll tell you right on Roger Sr. is McCaffrey who will certainly try to make his move before this one is all over. I'll tell you what, the Venable Racing Team with Rob McCaffrey at the wheel has made giant strides from last year. Uh, they brought on Nye Frank as the chief mechanic and Nye has a great history. He was with the championship Mazda team for five years back in the uh, mid to late 80s and he was also going back even further with Craig Breedlove's uh, land speed record efforts. Uh, this guy knows more about motors than you and I could ever dream about and he he has certainly put together some horsepower. Plus, Jim Venable, with that Ford team, gave the crew one assignment, one assignment only, before they had to basically take care of the desert racing program. Oh, and Senior gives up the lead with an error. He spins out, and it's McCaffrey who takes the lead. And now coming up right behind him is the overall points leader, Rod Millen. But McCaffrey using some misfortune by Roger Senior to grab the lead. In third currently, Rick Johnson. See if Roger Sr. can make up the lost time, but it will be absolutely, but it will be very difficult with only one lap to go. In fact, this will be the checkered flag coming up for Rob McCaffrey. So the, the focused effort of Venable Racing paying off here in heat number one. Our winner in heat number one, Rob McCaffrey taking the misfortune of Roger Mears Sr. and turning it in to his good luck.
Rob, congratulations on a fine heat win. You know, we were talking about the difference this team has seen with the addition of Nye Frank, the focus of the pit crew on this team, and one thing we didn't get to talk about was the number of test laps you've now been able to run. Well, that's right. Now that Nye Frank's on the team with the Spindle Brace, we've acquired a uh, great test track, and between every race we go out two days, get anywhere from 50 to 100 laps and try all kinds of things. Spindle Bracing guys, the crew, everybody, this is for them. Take a look at this. This is what happened to Roger. You had a bird's eye view. Yeah, um, I was right behind Roger, and he bicycled right there, and I knew this is it. Don't make any mistakes, and we'll have this one won. And uh, it's unfortunate for Roger that that happened, but uh, that's part of racing. Hey, we'll see you in heat two. Thanks a lot, Marty. Budweiser Track Fact is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. The last two races, including Seattle and here in the Mickey Thompson Series, have been run on dry surfaces, and Roger Mears Sr. has been undisputably the fast guy. Now, here's some reasons why. They'll run a taller gear in the rear end of these trucks. That gives them better side bite, shoots them down the straightaway a lot better. Up front, there's some changes as well. Right up here up front is the sway bar on the truck. Now, on the sway bar, they'll run a smaller bar. That gets them better, keeps the truck a little more stable, helps them drive down as well. And the tires on the trucks, you'll notice the groove on this tread is much more like what you would see on a street off-road vehicle. In fact, the BF Goodrich guys are running a variation of their IMSA rain tire on their trucks here tonight. Do yourself and your family a favor and get some tickets to the greatest racing in the world. Number one in the point standings, winning for the second time in a row. He won at Seattle, he wins tonight in Tempe, Arizona. age 17 and you showed uh, like uh, 71 years of experience making that b-lane choice because it was death to everybody else but that one time with all that lap traffic it really paid off for you yeah it, it paid off real well shannon looked like she was going to get tangled up with some lappers in there and i kept my momentum up and went out wide and yeah right there the guy got in her way and the goodrich tires hooked up the whole way no loose spins or anything and here we are once again a victory circle all right i've got to ask you i know you can't probably tell me too much but uh, we're here in the rumbles that you're uh, still in line for that second seat with the Chevy Thunder, the Nelson & Nelson Racing Team. What can you tell us? Where does it stand? They're going to build a second truck? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Diplomatic here, folks. <laughs> well, things are looking bright, that's all I can say, and hopefully we'll see you guys here soon in the Grand National. All righty. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Tonight, and of course, uh, all this based on what happened in heat race number one, and let's take a look at an updated uh, point standing here, Marty. Well, Rod Millen has now got a 13-point lead over Rick Johnson, the Toyota leading the Chevrolet driver. Rob McCachran picked up quite a few points, moving up to 159. Ivan Stewart still far back in sixth. Remember, he has never finished lower than third by the season end in Grand National Sport Truck Competition. So uh, Ivan's still got a long way to go with that sore back and still competing as we get ready for action here in heat race number two. Race in the hands of the starter as soon as the green flag drops. We're going to go racing. It's up, it's down, and we're off. And he tops it in the number nine. With Walker Evans in the number five, they have the lead by virtue of the inverted start. We'll see what happens when they get up to turn number four. The guy I want to keep an eye on is Rod Millen all the way in the back with the uh, inverted starting order. And the Iron Man knows that he's got to get a good start. He's out in the front right now. And in fact, he's got the lead. He needs points badly. It's the Iron Man with Walker Evans and Brian Stewart. One, two, and three. Brian kind of clipping Danny Thompson. And then they kiss again at the top of turn number five. Oh, look out right into our camera. Ivan Stewart racing to the lead, elected to take the lower lane to the top. It's Walker Evans, and we'll see what happens when they get to the top of the rhythm section. It appears that it will be the Iron Man who will retain the lead. So this perhaps may be a bust-out race for the Iron Man, who has suffered long and hard through the first three-plus events this season. Currently, Roger Sr., Number three. Look at the action back in the pack. Ricky Johnson trying to muscle his way past Rob McCaffrey, and he does. That is back in about sixth, seventh position. The, the guy that's Mr. Consistency right now, when you think about it, is Roger Mears Sr. He's in third place, holding his own. And if he doesn't make that mistake back in heat race number one, he's in victory lane there and looking at third place points here. Right, right. Right now, though, inside, Walker Evans. 
There is outside. And up in front of him, by about six or seven car lanes, is the Iron Man. There you see Ivan Stewart getting ready to come down the rhythm section. In fact, here he is from the front. Bouncing along and handling that particular piece of the track wisely. And seeing the white flag and knowing he has one lap to go. And he'll have heat race number two in the bag tonight. To the top of turn two, there is Roger Seeger. He's about to come up on turn number two. The Iron Man is leaving them all in the dust. Walker Evans behind him, Roger Sr. in third. They've been one, two, three, almost from the start of this race, certainly from the third lap. And we've got Evan Evans, nose to nose, close to the start and finish line, along with Brian Stewart. No yellows yet, checker flag out. The Iron Man takes it. He's won heat race number two. Walker Evans second, and Roger Sr. third. Ivan Stewart breaks free of the bad luck and wins heat race number two here in Tempe tonight. Right, this is what happens when you get a little sideways. Roger Mears Jr. gets into Brian Stewart just a little, gets Brian up in the air and going the wrong direction. This is luckily a mounted camera, no operator. I guarantee you if there was an operator, he'd be bolting for about 15 rows up into the stands. Well, I think we know again why they call you the Iron Man. Uh, no evidence of any pain in that back. No, it's, it feels pretty good, Marty. It's, it's still tender, I baby a little bit, but uh, but it's working well enough to, to get around the track pretty well. Yeah, well, if that's baby, and I'd hate to see it if you're going 100 percent because you showed no mercy to everybody else. <laughs> well, we got a good start. Things are working. Uh, things are working good. A little bit. Uh, truck's working good. We had the right tire choice, which is real, real critical. Uh, BF Goodrich has got several tires we can choose from, and uh, the track is kind of coming to us, Marty. Felt real good. Well, that's bad news for everybody else if the track is coming to Team Toyota as we head to the main event. Congratulations, Ivan. We'll see you then. Thank you very much, Marty. See you in the main event. Well, as you know, Ivan Stewart wins heat race number two tonight in the Grand National Sport Trucks, but he's a man operating in pain. And in fact, if, if I'm not mistaken, Ralph Shaheen, he's got a little bit of medical attention going on down there. Well, as you can see, Ken, the crew is working on his Toyota pickup truck. But just inside the Team Toyota Transporter, you'll see Dr. Tim Twombly working on Ivan's body. Now, Mr. Twombly is a chiropractor by trade, and he is doing what they call in his business adjustments. He is adjusting Ivan's neck and his back and his ribs. What he's told me is that every time Ivan gets out on the track, his ribs, his back, his neck get a little out of alignment, just like your car or your truck would. So basically what he is doing is aligning Ivan Stewart. Back in Tempe, Arizona with Marty Reed. Ken Bruce speaking to you. And uh, are you ready for this uh, main event? Uh, well, from what we've seen in the first two heats of the Grand National Sport Trucks, between Roger Mears and Rob McCachron and Ivan Stewart. I don't know who we're going to pick in this thing. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. We'll save that till we take a look at the highlights of heat race number one because this was an interesting battle right down to the end. It looked like Roger Mears was going to take this heat race. Now, he's got the lead there in the number four Bud Nissan. Right behind him is Rob McCachron. Notice what happens. Catches an edge, goes up on the bicycle. That opens the door for McCachron in the Venable Racing Ford. He goes on to take the win. Then, when we got the heat race number two, Ivan the Iron Man. Stewart showed that despite all the problems with his back being very sore from a crash in practice earlier in the week, the Iron Man knows why he's got that nickname as he took the lead from the get-go, never surrendered it as a lot of people did some thumping and banging behind him, but the Iron Man ended up taking the victory in heat race number two and went on from there right back to the uh, chiropractor as we saw to get some uh, treatment. And Walker Evans shows himself very well in, in heat race number two, not a guy to be counted out in the main. Finished second but I got to tell you, the man I'm going to pick, Roger Mears. I think he may make it two in a row. We may have our first repeat winner because despite that bicycle, he would have won heat race number one and he was right there in third place in heat race number two. He's shown the most consistency over the entire evening. I'm ready to go racing. Let's go. Queued up and ready to go for the main event of the Grand National Sport Trucks. And Marty Reed, let's get us up to date on the points. Quick glance at the points. Rod Millen is still on top, but his lead has narrowed as he now holds a 12-point margin over Rick Johnson. Rob McCachron with 171. The biggest jump, look at Ivan Stewart. He has jumped ahead of Danny Thompson into fifth place. 
in the point standings. And with us tonight for the Grand National Main, the man who was the first ever to crack 200 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Tom Sneva. Pleasure to have you with us, Tom. Well, thank you. We're not going to see 200 miles an hour today, but uh, as much as excitement, that's for sure. Might see 200 crashes. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> I think we might, but, uh, you know, we got Roger Mears down there who's run some Indy cars I've raced against, and uh, and then sort of my favorite, uh, uh, Walker Evans, who uh, I've raced snowmobiles against. So uh, I don't know who to... Taking your life in your hands with that maneuver. Boy, him and Parnelli, that's, uh, that's a two to dance with, I'll tell you that. There's the front row, Roger Mears Jr. and the Iron Man, Ivan Stewart. Mears Sr. in row number two alongside a Rob McCaffrey. The number one is Rod Millen alongside Rick Johnson. And there's Gary Scheimer. Ivan looks like he's ready to go. And it, as you mentioned, Marty... Uh, Bet against Roger Sr. I'll tell you what, it'd be great to see Ivan break out tonight. He has had a run of bad luck this year. Moved up to fifth points in the standings with that uh, heat race victory. Uh, Tom, of course, a, a Phoenix resident, and you've been able to catch the races when we're here. You know, the thing I've always, as we see the, the inside-outside lane, this is one of the unique characteristics of this sport. Have you ever had the desire to race one of these? Well, actually, I've done a little bit in the Hoosier Dome when they, uh, they, did, they didn't have dirt. They had mechanical ramps when uh, Mickey tried for a little while. And I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, it's just everybody has a good time out there. I Going back up high again, and Rogers somewhat of a trouble coming through that turn, and we've got Mears got punched around by one of the Fords. That's McCaffrey. He came nose to nose with Walker Evans in that mix, but all escaped, at least for the moment, unscathed. And here comes Ivan and Junior side by side down the rhythm section. It's going to cost Senior a couple of positions, though. And boy, these two for the front. It's now up to Junior to hold up the family honor. He's got the right brew for uh, this part of the racetrack. Well, but you notice the one difference I see is Junior seems to be over the edge a little bit more in these corners than Ivan. Ivan seems to have a little more truck under him. And you wonder if it's Ivan's first choice to go to that top lane. You're right. Sometimes it's not where you want to go. It's where you're forced. Well, we should see now which, which lane was quicker in that run. Boy, it's almost dead even. It's real close. Ivan's got the lead, though. Just by a hair over Roger Jr. And they come back over the start finish line again. Roger Jr. tries inside, but Ivan will have none of it. Boy, if Ivan Stewart can hold on for this win, oh, and Beers stuffs him on the inside and takes right. the lead. Great driving by Roger Jr. And now he pads his lead somewhat. Behind both of them in the number seven truck is Rick Johnson. Now, Roger Jr. could use the points. There's no question about that. He was far below in the pack coming into tonight, and a win if he holds on would certainly help him. Well, I'll tell you, you got to be impressed. Junior's had this truck all over the place, uh, Tom Stephen, and he's opened up the lead. He really has, and he's taken the inside groove. It looks like the Toyota trucks work better on, uh, on that outside groove. And Roger Jr. goes low as Ivan goes high. It's the strategy all night for both. And we'll see if Ivan can make up some distance. Looks like Roger's having a little trouble with the two tight corners on that inside lane. And, uh, oh, a lot of trouble there. And Ivan and Junior pump go sideways down the rhythm section. And it is Junior who maintains the lead. Look at Millen on the inside. Yeah, Millen may have it. White flag left. goes all the way over. But he's up on all four and still running, so there'll be no yellow. And of course, debris all over the track at this point. And it's still Roger Jr. with the lead, but now it is Millen on his tail, and not Ivan Stewart. Ivan had a little trouble on the outside lane, and that could be the difference in the race. Right now, Jr.'s got his hands full with Millen going into this final turn. He's too high. He's given the door in the opening. Oh, he closed it. He did. He got it closed just in time. And Roger Mears Jr. will win the main event here in Tempe, Arizona. Roger Mears Jr. now becomes the fourth different winner in four separate events so far on the Mickey Thompson circuit. Tom Steven, thanks for joining us. Glad to have you in. Uh, good luck. Thanks, Marty. Uh, I enjoyed it. A lot of fun watching you guys.
win good. Uh, looks like you went to the head of the pack and uh, weren't about to let anybody get by you. Great job. Ah, uh, thanks. I was trying to make my Budweiser truck as wide as I could there at the end. Uh, I knew that uh, Ivan was pounding on me pretty hard, and and I, I just wanted to make this main event win. Boy, I tell you, and it's, it's a big... Oh, here we go. That was the end, huh? That yeah. Was last you, lap. You were having a little bit of side bite problems there, and boy, you almost opened the door wide enough for Rod Millen to get through. Oh, no kidding. That was Rod, huh? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I knew once I got around that corner, even though he was there, I knew I had there was more traction out wide. So uh, I stayed out there in the, the rich soil. Well, it, obviously, you got the traction back down to the track because you uh, finished first. Congratulations. Fourth different winner this year. Oh, isn't that Thompson great? Tour. Congratulations. Two, two bud trucks in a row. The Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing is brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. And by Toyota Motorsports, where technology on a fast track is built into every Toyota. And by Valvoline, people who know use Valvoline. In-car cameras made possible by your friends at Goodyear. Dodge, American Racing Custom Wheels, and Nature's Recipe Pet Food. Barrier camera compliments of Dick Cepec and Rancho Suspension. Now speaking for Marty Reed and Ralph Shaheen, Ken Brew saying so long from Tempe, Arizona, and reminding you that this has been a presentation of Bud Sports in association with ESPN. was a racing legend. Mickey Thompson was, among many things, one of the great desert racers. He knew that if he could bring desert racing to a place where more people could watch, that stadium racing would be very popular. Well, it is. And in 1993, the battle for the lead in the Grand National Sport Trucks is proof that Mickey Thompson was right. The crowds have come to watch the Mears Gang, Ivan Stewart, and Rick Johnson and his Chevy make stadium racing as exciting this year as it's ever been. We're in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. It's round five of this series. And we invite you to be part of Mickey Thompson's dream. It's all next on ESPN. It has been a gorgeous afternoon here in Southern California. Temperatures in the 80s. In fact, you couldn't ask for better weather for racing. And it ought to be a heck of a night here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California tonight. Hello again, everybody, along with Marty Reed. Ken Bruce speaking to you. And Marty, here we are, the fifth event of the Mickey Thompson season in 1993. We still don't have a clear-cut favorite. Well, you take a look at the points championship right now for the drivers in Grand National Sport Trucks, and it depicts exactly what you're talking about, Ken. Here we are, round number five. Rod Millen is leading 221 to Rick Johnson's 192. Look at Rob McCaffrey, only one point back. But all the way down through the top six, each one of these guys, all the way down to Roger Mears Jr., who won our last event at Phoenix, has a chance for the Drivers' Championship. Now, we saw some names up there. We saw the guy behind the wheel at truck number one, guy behind the wheel at truck number seven. They know each other real well. In fact, they've been chasing each other all year. But our Mike Galloway is down on pit road, and he's gotten both to jump out of those trucks and spend some time with us. Okay, Mike. With four races and four winners this year, and our leader has yet to be one of those winners. Rod... Are you feeling any pressure that you haven't won a feature this year? No, not really. You know, the, the whole system of the, the grids this year, it's totally inverted. Um, you know, it means that the, the Toyota is obviously the fastest, and I'm enjoying that side of it. And, you know, we're getting close to the front. You know, I hope in the Rose Bowl here we might get a good chance. It looks like we've got a great racetrack. A great racetrack, but here's the man that's in the number two spot. And you kind of like it, but you won the first one this year. Yeah, everybody who started on the pole has won, so it's it's been, we've had four different winners. Um, I'm second in points, so Rod and I will be sitting on uh, the third row for the main event. Uh, with qualifying, we start in the back, so it's a little bit frustrating sometimes for fans and also for drivers. They, they're saying, well, you are fast in qualifying in the heats. How come you're not up there for the main? But it's making for good racing. It's putting the guys that are maybe having a, a slight off weekend up in the front and give them a chance to win the race and get back towards the top in points, but it's keeping us back there, and that's the frustrating part. Well, these two guys are going to definitely look for the front. Thank you, Mike Galloway. We'll be hearing from Mike as the evening progresses. 
It's a great driver's race. It's an equally great manufacturer's race. Well, the thing that's interesting here is this shows you the advantage of having a two-truck team. Take a look at Toyota with 376 points, and you're saying, well, wait a minute, Ricky Johnson's in second place in his Chevrolet, but why are they down so far? Well, Chevrolet is only running one truck. Now, that's going to be rectified later on in the season, but it'll be too late for Chevrolet, I think, at this point. They've got too much ground to make up. It's really a battle between Toyota, Ford, and Nissan. And any one of the three could win it. It's a big night here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, not just for the Grand National Sport Trucks, but a lot of other classifications as well. Up around the layout here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, the starting line will be on the back stretch, and turn one's a left-hander, 90 degrees, actually a big sweeper, which connects to turn two. That brings you through what will end up being the finish line, a double jump, down into turn three. That's a 180-degree left-hander. Through a series of rhythm jumps, you get out of sync, you're in some big trouble to turn number four. That's 180 degrees to the right. Again, another series of rhythm jumps, and then back to one more left-hander, Turn five, 180 degrees to the left. That takes you back to the back stretch one more time through one big jump, and this is a fast, fast course. Lap times under 29 seconds. And we're ready to go racing tonight in this Grand National Sport Truck heat number one. And wouldn't you know it, one of the guys that we're going to be watching in this first race drives that truck. The number one, the points leader, Rod Millen, not too far away from here in Newport Beach, California. And he'll start at the very back of the pack. As you can see, he's all the way at the back. He'll have to work his way through. Now, this track is the widest track that we've seen all season long. So passing is going to be a lot easier than it's been in the last four rounds. Well, we'll see here. And it's certainly been Millen's forte this year in picking up the passing points. As we begin, jumping out in front, Brian Stewart. He had the pole, and, or at least he had the lead. And certainly he maintains it as we're just through the first half of this first lap of heat race number one. Through that rhythm section. And now coming up at the top of turn number five. But it looks like Stewart may be challenged by Roger C. And it is Roger Sr. who takes the lead as they complete one lap here in this first heat race. Roger Sr. with Brian Stewart running second, but here comes Junior up to take that number two spot. So, Marty, just like we saw a couple of weeks ago in Phoenix, Beers Sr. and Junior dominating the early heat race. And Rick Johnson back in the back, starting to move his way up. He's trying to fight his way up into fourth position. Oh, we got a big pileup. Back at the top of turn number four, a truck over the Hyperbury. It appears to be the number three truck of Rob McCachran. He, so, he is out at this point of the race, and a full yellow has come out. So we'll go to the full portion. Now the red has come out. Red flag is out, and this will stop racing completely. Not a happy man, Ivan Stewart. What happened to him, Marty? Well, it looks as though they may have broken a water line because there's a lot of steam coming out from the front of the truck, and this will really hurt him in the points. It, if you don't finish a race, that's when you really fall down. If you remember, he came into tonight's action fifth in the points. That's the lowest he's ever been. He's never finished lower than third in the history of the sport. So Ivan Stewart apparently done at least for the moment, and we'll go to the pits to try and figure out exactly what the problem is. Inside the truck and almost inside the helmet of Roger Mears Sr. Little mud on that visor, you gotta expect that. 46 years old from Bakersfield, sitting on the front row right now and leading this pack. He won the main event back in Seattle. Junior won the last stop in Phoenix. The Mears gang running one, two here. I'm wondering if they're trying to make a statement, you think? I think so. He led wire to wire in both the seat and the main in Seattle. And he loved nothing better than that here. Roger Sr. on the restart. Junior gets bumped as they come through turn two. Still no yellow, but Roger Sr. leads the pack. Oh, and look who jumped from fourth all the way to second with some great maneuvering. The number seven, Rick Johnson Chevrolet Thunder. Johnson gets T-boned as he comes through turn number four, but maintains that second spot. And through the top of turn number five, it's Roger Sr. who continues to lead this race. There you see him in the number four Budweiser. Roger Mears Sr. out of Bakersfield, California. He has the lead in this first Grand National Sport Trucks tonight. Rick Johnson and his Chevy is right on him, and currently in third place, Brian Stewart. Stewart navigating well, as are all the trucks through the rhythm section. In the lead, though, as you see him pass screen left to right, is Roger Mears Sr. And dropping all the way back to the back of the pack is Roger Jr., perhaps a problem with his truck. Looks like a problem with the left rear wheel. 
as you see the battle for the lead will bring you up to date in third place is now Walker Evans. Brian Stewart is back to fourth. Past the barrier cam, and it looks like no. For a minute it looked like Johnson would take the lead from Senior, but he cannot. Roger Mears Senior continues with the lead. Now navigating through the river section inside the car now in the truck of Rick Johnson driving the Chevy. Currently running second, challenging for first, but Roger Mears Senior holding on. You know what was interesting? Throughout practice and qualifying, Roger Sr. said, I just don't have the setup. I don't have this thing figured out. Something happened between qualifying and tonight's first heat because he is holding off Ricky Johnson. Mears continues to hold the lead. Well, he had a very good run of it in Phoenix till he hit some runs and got knocked out. But truthfully, Roger Mears Sr. has had it dialed in ever since Seattle. Now Johnson passes inside and takes the lead. Mears comes back to battle him off. And Johnson maintains as he turns down turn number two. The red flag, though, out one more time. And we've got a major problem back at turn number four. We've got a truck on its side and completely disabled. All right, that's Rob McCachran on the outside. Brian up and over the barrier there, and boy, he just can't save it. We're going to restart heat race number one one more time. There is a man voted for Bear. He'd like nothing better than to come away with a win here tonight. Well, he doesn't like the fact that because of that uh, accident happening before he got the pass completed, it goes back to the previous lap. So Roger Mir Sr., there you see him. He's back in front of Ricky Johnson. Johnson in second place. Question is, for how long? The Budweiser normally in the lead, at least in the last couple of three events, and Roger Sr. wants nothing more than that tonight. But he's got to battle Johnson, who has looked sharp the last couple of laps. Johnson and the Chevy passing inside. But it's Roger Sr. that comes back with the lead as they navigate through the rhythm section. Top of turn number four, and Johnson, as you can see, inside his truck, kissing the bumper of Roger Sr. Now, this is a tire battle going on. Roger Mears is on Yokohama's and uh, Rick Johnson's on B.F. Goodrich. Now watch the side fight. See what happens? Oh, here he gets up on the bicycle. And it gives Johnson valuable time as they go down and over the jumps. Turn number three, navigated by Rick Johnson, who takes the lead. He has taken the lead from Roger Sr. Well, the problem he's got is that hood is flying up into his face. Now, according to the rules, he could be black flag. It appears that they are looking for the black flag down to, at the uh, start finish line but so far it's not out yet johnson continues with the lead holding off roger senior and as you can see that hook keeps flying up and it allows roger senior to take the lead one more time roger mears senior holding off walker evans and rick johnson has fallen behind somewhat but it's still roger's race there you see inside the car of rick johnson and you can see the havoc that that hood is uh, really playing in this race. Well, the best thing that could happen for Rick would be for that hood to go away, but it's just not. And he may get a black flag here. The white flag is out, not the black flag. And that means one lap to go. And Roger Mears Sr. still has the lead. Holding off Johnson, who's battling not only the course, but the hood that flaps in front of him. There you see Johnson in the number seven truck, the Chevy. Out in front, though, is the Budweiser of Roger Mears Sr. He's made it through turn number five. We'll come down now through turn number one and prepare to take the checker flag. Roger Mears Sr. has won. He race number one tonight. Rick Johnson will finish second. Number three will be number three, Rob McCachron. That's the finish in heat race number one. That's the winner, Roger Mears Sr. Roger, what a battle between you and Rick Johnson there the last few laps. Yeah, it really was. I'll tell you, he kept me honest. He got up beside me there, passed me once, and I just, uh, I was too determined. Uh, after a little altercation we had last week, I felt like I really needed to get back up there. Well, what was the difference? I mean, in practice and qualifying, you just couldn't find the setup, but boy, you had it here in heat one. Yeah, well, in, in qualifying, there was a track change that we weren't aware of, so uh, uh, we just didn't know about it and ended up uh, missing qualifying by a long ways, but we knew our uh, bud trucks were running good. Well, congratulations. We'll see you in heat number two. Thank you. Down in the pits with us tonight is Mike Galloway, who's standing by. Mike? Cal Wells, I haven't had a real tough break. What exactly happened to the truck? 
Well, at the start, we went a couple of turns, three or four turns. Ivan was jostling for position. He and Walker Evans came together, coming around the back straight. From what we can see on our tapes, not Walker's fault at all, not Ivan's either. Came over a little finger jump together. Walker's bumper just caught the left front door panel of ours just right and pulled an oil fitting loose. Consequently, the motor pumped all the oil out of itself. We burned it up. So the motor's gone. Any uh, problems in changing it? No, well, it's going to be a challenge. You know, we fight a time curfew here. After 10 o'clock, we're done. It's $2,000 a minute after 10 o'clock. MTEG or all of us racers have to pay because of the noise abatement problems here. So we're going to be fighting time. MTG won't be able to hold the show, but I'm pretty confident we'll be able to do it. Our record time is 42 minutes on this, and if it holds that way, I'm sure the Toyota team will make it happen. Don't buy one ticket. Buy a bunch and bring the family. We got an in-car camera, and we're ready to go racing here. And one of the things, I thought I saw some fluid leaking from one of the vehicles as they pulled up online. A bump to start, but Ryan Stewart has the lead. And I'm right, in the number six, Roger Mears Jr., he has got fluid leaking from underneath the right side of his truck. Oh, look out. Well, it is now the Iron Man who takes the lead as a full 360 has taken Ryan Stewart to the back of the pack. Iron Man, Ivan Stewart, with Roger Jr. on his heels. That's how they let up. One, two, and three is Rob McCachran. Now remember what happened in heat race number one. The Iron Man did not finish. He picked up all, only one point. He needs this badly. Ivan Stewart, Roger Jr., and Danny Thompson. One, two, and three. Iron Man continues to pad his lead. Brian Stewart trying to make up ground, but that'll be difficult because of his spin. I don't think Roger Mears Jr. is going to have a motor by the end of this heat race. I think he's leaking water out of his cooling system on the right side. Well, we'll see if smoke uh, appears from underneath the hood. Right now, he's good enough to be in second. It's the Iron Man that has the lead. Number seven, as you see there, is Rick Johnson. That's the battle for third place. With Danny Thompson. Thompson in third, Johnson in fourth. There you see Thompson in the nine. Johnson in the seventh. A battle between Chevy and Ford. All the way up at the foot of the pack is the Iron Man, Ivan Stewart, inside that Chevy. Johnson at the controls. Yeah, you notice how Rick sort of drives one hander? That's to get the other hand ready to hit that shift lever if he needs it. Kind of like what we do on the highway. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Ivan Stewart padding his lead over Roger Jr. We'll wait to see if that radiator problem manifests itself. Whoa, did you see did you see senior go airborne there? Really coming through the rhythm section extremely hard. Ivan Stewart now with a bigger lead as he negotiates turn number three. There's Roger Senior at four. Our barrier cam providing an excellent ground level view of these Grand National Sport Trucks. Here's our leader, Ivan Stewart, through Boy. the rhythm section. And, and the steam coming out of uh, Junior's side, right side is just getting more and more. There is Senior going airborne again. He's trying to track down Danny Thompson, Rod Millen right behind Senior. Well, what a marvelous turn of events this would be for the Ironman, should it hold up. Ivan Stewart struggling in the point standings, but he won in San Diego. He has three driving championships to his credit, 15 main wins. And he would certainly position himself well for a win tonight if he wins this heat. Inside again, the car of Rick Johnson, for number seven, Chevy. Meanwhile, back outside, number six, Roger Jr., and there's Johnson in number seven Chevy. And Johnson's seeing the same thing that we are. He can see all that steam coming out the right side. He's got to be wondering, hey, is this guy's motor going to give out here, and I'm going to inherit this position? Back inside with Johnson as he drives and negotiates through the rhythm section. Ivan Stewart, though, still has a sizable lead in front of him and Roger Jr. and Rick Johnson. Eddie Thompson currently running fourth. The white flag now officially deployed. The Iron Man has it. He knows one lap to go, and he can cruise into that main. Okay, Rick Johnson's going to change the strategy right here. He knows he's got to go after him. Here it goes, the dive on the inside. He makes the hair 
fifth turn, but Roger Senior, Roger Jr. continues to hold the lead. Now Roger Jr. takes the inside. Checker flag about to come out for the Ironman. We'll watch for that as we watch the battle here for second place between Roger Jr. and Rick Johnson. Checker flag out in front. There it is. Ivan Stewart has taken the checker. Roger Jr. has taken second. Third place goes to Rick Johnson. There's the winner. Ivan Stewart will go to the main event with a heat race win under his belt. I love mornings after my dad would race. I'd get up before anyone else, sneak out to the garage, and inspect every inch of his old Chevy. Just by looking, I could tell how well he did the night before. Yeah, I got my first taste of racing and my first taste of Sundrop right here. Sundrop, the taste you go wild for, and a favorite in the Earnhardt garage for over 40 years. Some things just kind of run in the family. Sundrop Citrus Soft Drink. Back at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena with Marty Reed. We're all set here for this Grand National Sport finale. But right now, I understand our Mike Galloway standing by with Rick Johnson, who would love dearly to win this race tonight. Mike? Rick Johnson sitting down in the pits, taking a break before the feature. Rick, all of the vehicles flying yellow ribbons tonight. What are they representing? Well, Colleen Campbell and some other people have put together an association to help victims that have had loved ones either killed or assassinated. And uh, we brought about 2,000 of those people out here tonight. So our ribbon is to show them that we care about the loved ones that they've lost wrongfully and that we support them and, and, and our prayers are with them. All the racers are showing their support of the victims against crime tonight. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Rick. And now let's talk about where Rick Johnson and the rest of the Grand National Sport Truck drivers are, Marty, as we get into this feature event. Well, the thing that's interesting is Rick is going to be starting in row number three alongside of Rod Millen. Now, you can see those two are battling it out for the lead right now. And the man to watch is going to be Ivan Stewart. He won heat race number two, but he's starting on the front row alongside of Roger Mears, Jr. You can see how the points are updated. I think if you're picking right now, based on performance, you've got to go with the Ironman, with him being on the front row. That's a good pick. I like that one too. What do you say we go racing? Well, if it happens, it'll be the first two-time winner this year. We've had four races, four different winners, and remember, Rod Millen is yet to make it to victory lane. Let's go trackside. Well, we'll see if it's Ivan Stewart's race tonight, as Marty Reed said. Grand National Sport Truck main event. We're ready to roll here in Pasadena. There is Roger Mears Jr. He's on the front row alongside the Ironman in row two. It's Mears Sr. and Rob McCachran. Rick Johnson and Rod Millen in row number three. The winner is coming from those three rows. And the one guy you got to watch, you know, he hasn't done much tonight, but you, you keep waiting for this team to break through, and that's that's the Ford Rough Rider, number three, of Rob McCachran. All right. The green flag is up and out. And quickly, it's the Budweiser of Roger Mears Jr. who takes the lead. Ivan Stewart right on his heels. Ivan Stewart looking to climb back up in the points race. He would certainly do himself well with a win tonight in the main. He has taken the lead after one half lap. He's through the rhythm section and the Ironman. Ivan Stewart has the lead. The thing, thing to remember about Ivan is 10 days ago, he had that testing accident where he really hurt his back, made it through the Phoenix race. Boy, he is showing no signs of pain right now. In fact, the only pain he's giving is to the rest of the field. Roger Jr. in second place. Rob, well, I should say Roger Sr. now taking over in third as he passes Rob McEachern. In fact, it's Roger Sr. And is that Rick Johnson who kiss? Bottom line is, it is... Still, Ivan Stewart with the lead. There's Rick Johnson inside his Chevy. He is our uh, carrier in board camera. Yeah, he's but running. It's Ivan Stewart, who has really taken the lead at this race. And Rick is running sixth right now. Ivan Stewart, Roger Jr., Roger Sr., Rob McCaffrey. One, oh. two, three. And Mir Sr. has a broken left spindle. He has, you'll see, look at it, just falling around down there, and he is going to drop way back. He'll have to drop out of this race. Meanwhile, Danny Thompson has already dropped out of the race. He has gone to the pits, and there you see the trouble that Roger Sr. is having, and he has done for the night. There's no question about it. Back to the leader here is Ivan Stewart in the Toyota. Parts flying, wheels spinning. 
He has the lead by about 10 car truck lanes over Roger Sr. over Roger Mears Jr. Roger Sr. is still in the race though. Yeah, Mears is continuing to drive this. I don't know if he can go that long. I mean, every time he hits the bumps, it's just incredible the punishment he's putting on himself and the rest of the vehicle. There is Rick Johnson, and now inside the Chevy of Rick Johnson. He's looking to make up ground, but it's not going to be easy for the man behind the wheel of the Chevy. It is still Ivan Stewart with the lead, second place, Roger Jr., and Rob McCaffrey currently running third. Rick Johnson in fourth, trying to come up now and take over that third spot behind Rob McCaffrey. You know, Rod Millen is running seventh. This would not bode well for his points leadership if this ends up this way. Meanwhile, Ivan Stewart now lapping Roger Sr., who refuses to die. Roger Sr. can barely move. Not the case with Ivan Stewart or Roger Jr. or, for that matter, the Chevrolet of Rick Johnson, who is now in third place. Yeah, I was just going to say, he managed to get around the number three of Rob McCaffrey, putting McCaffrey back and forth, and I know why. McCaffrey's got a flat right rear tire. So McCaffrey through attrition, dropping out. It's played Roger Sr., it's played Danny Thompson, now perhaps claiming McCaffrey. Now inside, Rick Johnson and the Chevrolet still trying to make up ground, still trying to take over second place, which is currently held by Roger Jr. Ivan Stewart adding to his lead as he passes lap traffic in the form of Evan Evans. Less than five laps to go now. There you see the duel, and Johnson overtakes Roger Jr. for second place. Nothing wrong with this man's vehicle, though. White flag out, one time around for the Iron Man. The Iron Man with a sizable lead over Rick Johnson. Johnson could hold on and finish second. But it's Ivan Stewart who has the lead. It is his race. We said at the beginning of this race, it would be Ivan Stewart's race to either win or lose. Well, Ivan Stewart went out, took the lead, at the waiting stages of lap one, he has never let go. And now, set sail for home at his second checker flag of this 93 season. He's got it. The Iron Man wins it tonight in Pasadena. Rick Johnson will win his second. Third place will go to Roger Jr. The winner tonight, the Iron Man. Ivan Stewart. A game try by Johnson, but the cup goes to Ivan Stewart. Ivan Stewart, you're the first two-time winner after five rounds of racing. Congratulations. You really needed this one tonight. Well, oh, I really did, Marty. I really wanted to win it for the Precision Preparation Crew. Charlie Tisson, the guys that pulled the motor out and, and changed that bad motor we had. Uh, actually, it wasn't a bad motor. We knocked a fitting off when I got together with Walker or Brian, one of them. But no, they did a great job. They have good tires, obviously. Ultra Custom Wheels. Couldn't have been better. Take a look at the monitor. This is back to the start of the race. And just take us through it. Well, i tell you what I was trying to do. I... We had so many restarts, Marty. I was trying to capitalize on what Roger Jr. was doing, and I thought if I could get a real good start, I had a throttle hanging up off the first couple of restarts, and it would kind of, like a rocket got up in the engine someplace. But I kind of, I had a good feeling like getting right through that area, so it uh, fell off a of good, Marty. Boy, from that moment on, you just rocketed past. Everybody else beat up on each other, but uh, you had a nice, clean race. Congratulations. Great win. Thank you very much. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing is brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, and proud to be your bud. And by Toyota Motorsports, where technology on a fast track is built into every Toyota. And by Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. In-car cameras made possible by your friends at Chevrolet. American Racing Custom Wheels. Goodyear. And Nature's Recipe Pet Food. Barrier camera compliments of Dick Sepek and Rancho Suspension. Now, this is Ken Bruce speaking to you, along with Marty Reed and Mike Galloway, saying so long from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, and reminding you that this has been a presentation of Bud Sports in association with ESPN. And good evening again, everybody. We're nestled in between the mountaintops tonight here in Salt Lake City, along with Marty Reed, Ken Bruce speaking to you. Marty, I think this is going to be a great night of racing. A lot of individual and a lot of manufacturer's point races still up in the air. Well, we're heading into round six, past the halfway point, and the showdown is about to begin. Take a look at the manufacturer's points first off. Toyota has the lead, and it is sizable, 474 to 391 over Ford, and then Nissan close behind at 389. But it does not translate 
to the driver's point standings. The battle there is up for grabs between five drivers. Take a look. Ten points separate Rod Millen and Ricky Johnson. Rob McCachron, only 25 points out of second place. And then Roger Mears and Ivan Stewart. So things very tight still in the driver's points. And there's a new twist this week. We've got a new driver who is standing by down on pit road with Bart Kendall and with the veteran Rick Johnson. Bart? Rivalries have always had a big place in motor racing, and these two gentlemen, Jeff Ward and Rick Johnson, had tremendous rivalries when they were racing motocross. They had 14 national titles between them in their career. Now they've made the move to the trucks. Rick Johnson's done very well. He started last year, has a win this year, is second in the points. Now, Jeff Ward, this is your very first effort in a Grand National Sport Truck. It's got to be a big difference for you. Oh, it's a lot different. Uh, haven't had much time in the car, as Ricky knows, when you're starting out. you got to watch everybody and learn. I did that in motocross when I moved into pro. So I'm, uh, it's a new experience for me, but I'm having a great time. Well, obviously, Rick, you didn't have to take too long adjusting. Uh, what was the reason for your, your quick adjustment to the sport of uh, truck racing? Well, I think we had a really aggressive uh, testing program at Chevrolet and Nelson & Nelson Racing. Uh, it was a new vehicle, a new driver. Uh, they came, Nelson & Nelson came from, they were desert experts. I was, I was a, a professional in motocross. <clears throat> so we came to a middle ground of, of compromise on testing and trying different things. So we had two different strategies of how to make the truck work. And I think that aggressive testing schedule is what helped me accelerate so quick. Well, if the success of these guys is any indication, we might see two-wheel racing as a training ground in the future for four-wheel racing. First off, I have to ask you, you have got to be in some pain. I just watched you walk out of this car, and you are hunched over, partner. Yeah, I really hurt my back today in qualifying. I caught a bump wrong, just cratered my uh, back. I, but uh, I think I feel better in the car than I do standing up, though. <laughs> are you going to be able to make it through uh, another heat and the main? I think so. I mean, I, I hope so. As long as I don't have to stand up, I'm okay. I, but our uh, Conoco Budweiser truck's just really running good tonight. All right. Uh, you obviously gave me a good hint there. I'm going to let you go get some rest. We'll see you in the second heat. Thank you very much. The best racing is yours if you live in and around these cities. Come on out and watch. Bart Kendall. Bart? We had a pretty rough heat number one in the truck race. Uh, one of the casualties was the, uh, the Chevrolet truck of Rick Johnson. You see right here, this is the front bumper assembly. And this right over here is what used to be part of the front bumper. I'm not even sure how it goes right now. What had happened, though, is that thing was bent back into the right front wheel, restricting the movement of the right front wheel. So in essence, Rick was driving a three-wheel vehicle. We know he can drive two-wheel vehicles. We know he can drive four. But he hasn't yet figured out how to drive a three-wheel vehicle. Set Grand National Sport Trucks, heat number two, ready to go. These folks ought to see a good old good one. Look at the point standings, Marty, now, after one heat race tonight. Well, Rick Johnson had a horrible heat number one and you can see what happened to him he is now trailing by 22 points he was trailing by 10 before the evening started rob mccachran made a little headway to 239 roger beers made the biggest jump in total points he's got 211 as we head into heat race number two now rick johnson's probably wondering if he wouldn't have had that damage problem where he could not maneuver the truck and he only picked up seven points in that last race. And there is Roger Mears. We've got to be wondering if his back is okay. We're on board with his truck as we're ready to go racing. Race is in the hands of the starter up front. Roger Jr. and Danny Thompson will lead it off as they come through turn number one. Danny Thompson on the inside goes for it, but it's Roger Jr. who takes the lead. And he is letting it all hang out. He took a couple of jumps there, and now navigates and gets uh, himself crossways with Danny Thompson, and Danny Thompson takes the lead. We're three abreast here, guys. They can't do that. Danny Thompson did some nice driving to get out of the way of that. And now oh. it's Roger Jr. who gets spun around in the back by Walker Evans. There's a big pile up at the top of turn number three. <laughs> that unscrambles quickly. The beneficiary of it all, Walker Evans, who's now in second. Still out front with the lead is Danny Thompson. Here they come over the jump by our barrier cam. And Mears Sr. moves into second place. This bad back may be a godsend for him. I mean, he is just driving like a man possessed. Meanwhile, it's almost, almost a quarter of a lap space between first and second. Here comes Roger Sr., but he gets outmaneuvered by Walker Evans. He and Danny Thompson continues to lead inside now with Roger Sr. Ivan Stewart has pulled his way up. Here comes Roger trying to dive on the inside also. 
You can see it from the end card. That's what it looks like from outside. He has regained second position. This has changed three times in the last lap. Here comes Ivan Stewart closing on Walker. Still, it's Roger Sr. in second place. Ivan battling with Walker for third. And right now, it's Ivan who's got it. Meanwhile, Danny Thompson continues to lead. Roger Sr. followed there by Ivan Stewart. Meanwhile, up front, it's Danny Thompson who won a heat race this year in Seattle. Number four in the main. He would dearly love to get this heat race tonight and position himself in good shape for the main. He's got a big lead now. It's a bunched up pack that's behind him. Let's reset it for you. Behind Danny Thompson, it is Roger Mir Sr. Then Ivan Stewart is third. Then the number five of Walker Evans and Rob McCaffrey has pulled his way up the position. And he's going after and takes Walker Evans. You just saw him coming right at you. He's now moved into fourth. That's our barrier cam you're looking at right now. Meanwhile, there you see Roger Sr. and Ivan Stewart battling for second place. Currently, right now, belonging to Roger Sr. Up ahead, it's Danny Thompson. Marty, what great news this would be for the Rough Riders team if, indeed, Danny Thompson goes on and wins this heat race. Yeah, they are doing very well throughout the uh, practice and qualifying, especially McCaffrey's truck. This is a big surprise for Danny. This is the best run he's had in this truck. Here's the battle for second as Ivan has again reeled in Roger Mears Sr. And Roger holds him Look off. Look at McCaffrey! And Rob McCaffrey T-bones Roger Sr. And it's Ivan Stewart who benefits. He now has second place all by his lonesome. In third now is Rick Johnson. Johnson picks up two spots. McCaffrey, unfortunately, is going to be out of this race because it looks like the left front spindle is snapped on his truck. No, nope, he's just... Yes, he does have a, a steering problem. He's going to have to nurse it on home. What a shame for McCaffrey. Meanwhile, Danny Thompson unfazed by it all, despite the fact that his teammate, Rob McCaffrey, is seemingly out of contention. Inside with Roger Sr., you're seeing what he's seeing. Perhaps not feeling what he's feeling, but getting an idea of what it's like. White flag is out for Danny Thompson. This could be a big, big night for Danny. He has won one heat race before this year at Seattle and appears to be en route to a heat race here tonight in Salt Lake City. The battle still is for second. Ivan has lost contact with it. He's back in fourth. Rick Johnson holding off a determined Roger Mears. And Mears gets around him. Now it's Senior who's moved into second. Johnson continues to battle. He's at the top of turn number three. It's still Roger Senior in second. And Danny Thompson will stare at the checker flag and take it here at heat race number two tonight. It's Danny Thompson in the rough ride. Oh, no! And we've got Roger Senior oh! on his side, he driving up it. and through it and taking second place. Oh, it's Rick Johnson third and Ivan Stewart fourth. He does a complete roll and finishes second. Unbelievable. All right, let's go back to the moment when Danny Thompson is going to, there you see him, get ready to take the checker flag. Mears gets up, hits the barrier there, the uh, section of the course that's cambered off, and he rolls over and keeps it in the throttle and just drives on to take second place. Rick Johnson holds on for third. Incredible finish. Where did you get all that horsepower, young man? I mean, you shot out of there and nobody could catch you. Well, I tell you, the Ford's really running good, Marty, and uh, we had a, some pretty good luck in that first race at the first couple laps, and the Ford was really running strong. And we just got back. We had a power steering pump break in the first time, so, we, you know, we kind of muscled it around there with no power steering, but, boy, this time it was awesome, and I just hope it runs like that for the main. Take a look at some of this action behind you. You should be real happy you weren't in some of this. Yeah, oh, there there goes Roger passing uh, Ricky Johnson. That was a pretty nice inside move. So, I tell you what, when you're out in front, it's really a good feeling, Marty, because you don't have to fight with those guys. And then every time they fight with each other, you get a little bit farther away, and it makes your job just a little bit easier. Well, can you duplicate it in the main? We're going to sure try. Ford wants a main event real bad this year. And both myself and Rob McCacken both are going to give it a heck of a try. And I hope to be talking to you in a little while. We'll see you in the main. Thanks, Marty. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing is coming to the Silver Bowl. And if you live anywhere near Las Vegas, come out and see the best racing anywhere. September the 11th at Las Vegas. What a shot that is of the state capitol here in 
Utah and its fine capital city of Salt Lake. Marty, here are the updated points. Grand National Sport Trucks. Rick Johnson picked up a few from the last heat race. He's 20 behind Rod Millen. The big gainer so far tonight is Roger Mears. He hasn't passed Rob McEachern, but he is within striking distance. This is still a five-man race. Ivan Stewart really needs a big performance, but Rod Millen still in control at the top of the heap, even though he has yet to win a main event this year. Maybe it'll change in a few minutes. I've been waiting for this, Marty. Grand National Sport Truck main event. And look who's sitting up on that front row. I'll tell you what. Ivan Stewart. It is going to be an interesting race because Ivan's the only two-time winner this year. This race is in the hands of the starter. And we are just about ready to determine who will win the main event here at Salt Lake City tonight. Roger Jr. trying to hold off the Iron Man. And they go nose to nose down that first straightaway, and the Iron Man has taken about a truck length lead. But he swings far outside, and that allows Junior to come inside. Does not matter, as the Iron Man takes the lead and now tries to begin to build some sort of a pad. Boy, this is going to be interesting. Now, remember, McCachran has been able to double jump. He's in third right now. This second set of jumps right there where Ivan took him in a single. Junior takes him in a double. Big pile up through that fourth turn. The Iron Man and McCachran come side by side over the start finish line. Now, in both heat races tonight, McCachran got taken out of the contention by some bad luck. He was making some great moves when he got caught up in somebody else's mistake. And he went to the penalty box once, too, remember? That's true, and he also protested that call, and nothing has yet uh, come of that. On but board with Roger Sr., and look at him get bounced around. He's currently riding fourth. And he's looking ahead at Junior right in front of him. But the real battle is up front. Watch McCachran here. Now, this is where in one of the heat races, he took the double jump and got swept up in somebody else's mistake. He does it again. Roger Sr. now coming up to challenge Roger Jr. for third, but the lead change goes down to McCachran. And Ivan Stewart comes inside and wrestles it away from him at and the top of turn one, and McCachran yeah. takes it back. These guys are going to go like this the rest of the way. McCachran has been waiting for a night like this. All of, oh, no, and Rodman turned him over. Rough driving will take that one. Back. That's definitely going to send Ivan back. And full course yellow is out. As on his side is the board of Rob McCachran. Let's take a look at this great passing action. This is Ivan on the inside. Then he goes wide, and McCachran does the right thing. He tucks down underneath him. Then as they come down into this corner, McCachran's got the outside line. He closes the door, and Ivan gets right into it. And yes, rough driving has sent Ivan Stewart to the back of the pack. Now, Ivan is fifth in the points. He cannot afford this move. This is going to cost him dearly, and McCachran gets placed back up at the front of the pack on the restart. On the restart, McCachran starts up front, the Mears gang right behind him, Junior and Senior. Junior currently running second, but it's McCachran who is zoomed to the lead, and he is up, taking the berm at the top of turn number three. McCachran through the rhythm section. Junior is second. Watch the man in third, Rod Millen. Oh, he gets into uh, Mears. They unscrambled. Everything is all right. Danny Thompson, we should point out, out of the race. Again, another lap in the bag. And Rob McCachran sands the door on the driver's side, has got another lap in the books. Two laps to go. And he's handling this track extremely well. Marty, we talked about the tires. We talked about the setup. And apparently, McCachran has found the magic tonight. Well, he had a very good run going in both of the heat races. But remember, he got swept up in somebody else's mistake both times. And it basically took him out of it. And it's, it's interesting that he also got, you know, here in the paint with Ivan punching him over. This time, the break went his way. He's put back at the front of the pack. And look at the job that he has turned in tonight. Here is McCachran anticipating his first win tonight. Let's talk a little bit about second place. If Rod Millett holds on, he will retain the points leadership. He hasn't won at all in 1993. He's just been flat consistent. Yeah, Millett has yet to win. I mean, oh no, and McCachran goes over. McCachran goes over, but he comes back on his wheels. He got in the way with the number six car of Roger Mears Jr. And he's now right in front of Rod Millen, and he may have problems. He may have damage to the truck. 
he Danny drove out of it. He drove out of it well, but you're right, Marty. He may have damaged his truck. And this is big news for Millen, who now has closed the gap to about two car, two truck lanes on Rob McCachron. Oh. And Millen is making a move here at the top of turn number four to perhaps take the lead. The white flag is out. There's only one lap to go. They touch. Millen has taken the lead. Rod Millen has taken the lead on Rob McCachron. And Millen now perhaps poised to win his first of 93. He's built now a big margin of lead on Rob McCachron. Oh, what misfortune for Rob McCachron. And, and McCachron's going to fall to third. Here comes the Iron Man. In fact, he's going to fall even further. He's dead in the water. Rick Johnson, Johnson will move into third. Ivan Stewart is now second. And the story now becomes Rod Millen in his Toyota out of Newport Beach, the points leader. His margin of leadership cut to 10 coming into tonight. He will win the main event, his first main event of 1993, Rod Millen. Second place to the Ironman, Ivan Stewart. Third place goes to Ricky Johnson. Well, this the sport has some bizarre twists to it. I saw you grooving your own tires right before qualifying because you were not happy with the way the truck was performing. You ended up getting the pole. All yeah. of a sudden, you look like you're going to finish second again. And then, did you see what happened to Rob McCaffrey? No, I didn't see what was happening. I was sort of following along there, you know, trying to be in the thick of it to see, you know, capitalize on any mistakes. But yeah, as you said, I did groove my tires. And those were the tires I used in qualifying. We ended up in the last minute throwing them on the truck. And it's just working out crazy. You know, I've got to extend my points lead now. Toyota has extended their manufacturer's points lead. We are real happy. Congratulations, Rod. Thank you. See you in Las Vegas. Look forward to it. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that fresh, pure, natural taste. Proud to be your bud. And by Toyota Motorsports, where technology on a fast track is built into every Toyota. And by Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. Now speaking for Marty Reed and for Bart Kendall, Ken Brew saying so long from Salt Lake City, Utah, and reminding you that this has been a presentation of Bud Sports in association with ESPN. Let's take a quick tour of the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. The one unique characteristic about this track is it is extremely tight. It's a benefit for the fan because they're right on top of the action. Coming off the starting line, turn one is a sweeper to the left. 180 degrees, puts you on the back stretch. And boy, you can fly down there. Then hard on the brakes for turn two. Another 180 degree left-hander takes you over a set of two jumps and then into to a rhythm section for turn number three. The only right-hand turn on the course. Again, 180 degrees. Then a couple more jumps, another set of rhythms, and then down into turn four, the final turn as you make that left-hander and head for the finish line. And that's one lap at the Silver Bowl. So we're set now for the first heat race of the night, Grand National Sport Trucks. And Marty, if anybody is going to catch Rod Millen, they had better start tonight. Well, we're looking at Roger Mears right there. He's going to be on the pole. Now, remember, with the inverted starting order, there is Walker Evans right behind him. What's interesting is Rick Johnson, number two in the points, is going to start way back in row number five. There's a shot of uh, Greg George, or uh, pardon me, uh, <laughs> I should say Danny Thompson and Rob McCachron, his teammate. There is is uh, Ivan Stewart right there, the Iron Man giving us a thumbs up. And then right behind, that is uh, Rick Johnson. And Rick has a long way to go to catch Rod Millen, and Millen's going to be one row in front of him alongside Ivan Stewart. The race in the hands of the starter, and we're racing tonight in Las Vegas. And very quickly, it's Roger Sr. who storms to the lead in that Nissan, but right on Roger's tail is that Walker Evans Dodge out of Riverside, California. Looks Boy. like Roger got hung up there at the top of turn three. Another guy that got hung up was Jeff Ward. He got punched to the outside, and boy, everybody went past, so he is well back. And right now, oh, Mears gets love tap from behind. He stalled, and uh, Walker Evans said, hey, <laughs> I got nowhere to go. Move. Meantime, it's Roger Jr. who's come up into second
second place behind his dad as we have one lap in the book here at Las Vegas and the Silver Bowl and a big pile up through turn number five but everybody gets through eventually and cleanly and it's still Roger Sr. in that Budweiser Nissan who has the lead. Roger Jr. in second and look who's come up into third place the Iron Man Ivan Stewart. Yeah and there's steam coming out of the number six of Roger Mears Jr. So it looks like he may be having an overheating problem perhaps you can see right there alone the puff of smoke and Ivan Stewart gets around him and he's pressing for the lead and he has closed into the lead momentarily but at the top of turn number five it is Roger Sr. who holds the Iron Man off forcing him outside and now Roger Sr. has built himself a little more of a lead Rob McCachran from that Rough Riders team has moved into second and McCachran took advantage of everybody else going after each other Rod Millen you see him working the steering wheel he is a little bit further back right now he is all the way about third from last but the the thing that was interesting is McCachran took advantage of everybody beating on each other snuck past everybody but Roger Mears senior he's now in second Roger Mears senior with a little tail coming off the back end of that Budweiser truck but he maintains the lead ever so slightly now over the Ford of Rob McCachran in third place the Iron Man in fourth place Roger Jr who apparently has got some sort of cooling problem here in this first heat race. And oh. now a tie-up at the top of that turn, just past turn number one, and the worst for wear on this one appears to be the truck of Walker Evans. Mears hung up a little bit on the berm through the top of turn number four. Boy, Ivan Stewart took the inside lane and got a position away from Rob McCachran. Now he's going to try the outside on Mears. Still a lot of racing left in this heat race. Heat race number one of the Grand National Sport Trucks. Roger Mears Sr. with the lead. He is currently running fourth. Make it fifth in the point standings. Meanwhile, the leader of the pack, Rod Millen, at least overall this year, continues to trail badly. Let's bring you up to date. Jeff Ward has moved up to fifth, so he has uh, rebounded from his early misfortune. He is uh, trailing Roger Mears Jr., who is in fourth, and there is the battle. Oh, and Roger Mears Sr., a tap from Ivan Stewart. I wonder if Rough Driving will take a look, because Ivan's got the lead. He has nosed into the lead. The Iron Man has taken the lead, and Mears Sr. spins and rights himself. And what a great spin and drive out by Roger Sr. And then McCaffrey gets into Ivan Stewart, who allows Roger Mears Jr. to get around, and now Mears Jr. goes over. Mears Jr. on his lid. The yellow flag is out. Now the full course yellow. Wow. I, I, I don't want to be rough driving in this one, trying to sort this out. Well, let's take a look at some of this action. I mean, it was fast, and it was furious. Now, take a look. Ivan gets right in to Mears at this point, and Mears almost loses it, does end up losing the position. Then as it continues down into turn one, watch what happens as Mears turns in, hooks with Ivan and goes over. Then out of frame, Ivan gets loose. There you see him hung out to dry. And Mears comes back. Meanwhile, McCachran has taken the lead. And then here we go as it continued on and on. We're down to eight Grand National Sport Trucks. And that really hurts him in the points battle. Oh, and, and then we got a car. Rogers Jr. Junior. spins but drives out of it, leaving behind Rod Millen and Jimmy Johnson. Those two the worst for wear after that roll by Roger Jr. And are you ready for this? Seven-time Supercross champion Jeff Ward is now second to Ivan Stewart. The Iron Man, though, batting his lead and staring at the white flag, which means one lap to go. Iron Ivan Stewart. He won at San Diego and he won at Pasadena. He was number two at Salt Lake City. His truck has been dialed in perfectly almost since midseason. And now looking at perhaps a heat win here in Las Vegas tonight. And his lead is growing. What's really interesting, this is the best performance by Dodge all season long. They're going to finish second and third in this heat. Jeff Ward right on the Iron Man's tail. The Iron man losing a little body paneling there but no problem there checker flag in his face Ivan Stewart first Jeff Ward second
second, and Walker Evans will finish third. There's our winner tonight in heat race number one. It's the Ironman, Ivan Stewart. Back back, brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Here in Las Vegas, the weather is always a factor. And you know, we're in the middle of the desert. Today in the shade, oh, what's that, 105? Well, that takes a lot of toll on the equipment because of the heat that's built up during the race itself and the temperatures in the motor. And it also takes a big toll in the drivers because the fluids that they lose during a race have to be replenished after the races. But the temperature will drop off before the night's over with. As a matter of fact, before the races start, we'll come back and take a look at this thermometer and see exactly how much it's dropped off. You know, we checked this thermometer about five hours ago and it was 105. We talked about what it was going to do to the cars and the drivers. Well, it's almost race time and the temperatures dropped down a lot, as you can tell. Hey, it's down to 98 now. They'll think a cold front came through. I'll tell you what, you know, the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series is a study of contrast. Well, you know, on a, on a given Saturday night like tonight, you can watch no less than six different vehicle types in different races. The largest vehicle, of course, is the Grand National Sport Truck at 3,000 pounds. But the smallest, huh, the smallest, 90 pounds. The Pee Wee Motorcycles and the largest driver, probably the very well-constructed Ivan Stewart. The smallest? Well, maybe it's Spencer Clark, a five-year-old Pee Wee class rider. And as exciting as the sport trucks are to watch, take a look at the Pee Wees. And here we go with our Pee Wee action tonight. And these kids not only are from all over the western part of the United States, but there's some great racing blood out here, Marty. Well, three of these youngsters are the sons of racers in the Mickey Thompson series. For example, Ryan Millen, Rod Millen's son, is eight years old. He's out there. Then also, uh, Greg George's son, Garrett, he's four years old, riding a young... Oops, there goes one of the guys down. And then also, T.J. Clark. His son, Spencer, at age six, is on the Yamaha. And these guys have a heck of a lot of fun. In fact, I sometimes think that the fans cheer these guys harder than they do the Grand National Sport Truck guys. Here is Justin Lavoie from Mission Viejo, five years old. Whoa! That's pretty quick for a five-year-old. <laughs> I'll tell you what, people racing it is just one more part of the excitement when you come out to see a Mickey Thompson event. You are looking inside the Chevrolet of Rick Johnson, who is all set to go in this heat race number two of the Grand National Sport Trucks. And Marty Reed, update us now on the point standings as they exist after one heat race tonight. Well, Rod Millen has picked up some ground. He now has 329 to 286 over Rick Johnson. But look at the Iron Man. He has now gone into a tie with Rob McCachron for third with 268. And in all the days that Ivan has been racing this series, he has never finished lower than third by season's end. It is still Rick Johnson up front, but he's got a new partner up there as Mears Sr. has gone to the back. Jeff Ward now up front. Rick Johnson, though, like he has in the first two other restarts, off to the lead. And Danny Thompson pulls over immediately, so one of the Ford Rough Riders is out of this heat. Meanwhile, Johnson with the lead, Roger Jr. behind him, and Walker Evans currently third. Oh, Rick Johnson. Third in Salt Lake City, he won Anaheim, but stumbled badly at Phoenix and Seattle. Oh, Walker sideways. And now Johnson continues to lead with Roger Sr. behind him. Oh, and now we've got a complete spin, and it's Millen who drives out of it. And up on the hydro barrier. Jimmy Johnson. Is Jimmy Johnson. Walker Evans punted Rod Millen, and then Millen gets into the number 14 of Jimmy Johnson. There is no caution, no full course caution yet. Rick Johnson trying to 
hold off Roger Sr. now, who may perhaps smell a little blood. He goes outside. Johnson holds him off inside. And Rod Millen has moved up the fourth. McCachran making a bid for second as he comes side by side with Roger Sr. Meanwhile, here's Johnson over the start finish line. Great shot by our barrier cam. And there goes our leader in points, Millen. He currently running fourth. Meanwhile, back in the front, it's the Chevy of Rick Johnson from Encinitas, California. Rod Millen on board, and uh, you can see the punishment that these drivers take. Ricky Johnson, as we look out front now, Rod looking well straight ahead. His hood is uh, starting to come a little loose. Fight for second place between the Nissan of uh, Roger Mears and Rob McCachron in the Ford. And they are side by side through turn one. And the only truck that still has every body panel, this may be the kiss of death, is our our leader, Rick Johnson. Look how clean that truck looks. That's amazing. Johnson continues to lead it by quite a bit over Roger Mears Sr. Rick Johnson will have the white flag in his face now. And after three restarts... Oh, and Rod Millen gets punted by his own teammate. Ivan Stewart takes Rod Millen out. Let's go back and take a look. Watch the left side of the screen. There's the number one of Rod Millen. He comes in, he stalls. Oh, and Ivan coming in hard. Just miscalculates his own teammate making a move and he sends him over. So Team Toyota, I'm sure, will have a little get together after this heat race. So on the restart, Rick Johnson, his normal position of number one. He's been there for every other restart so far in this second heat race and there's some blue smoke up there and i'm not sure if that's coming from rick's truck or roger mears like i know it's rick's it is rick's truck and it, i'm not sure if it could be his transmission here's a look out of millen and what he sees in front of him what he sees is rick johnson third place now is roger senior and ivan is making a move on him I'm uh, interested in uh, Rick Johnson's truck. He is losing power. And here comes Rod Millen. And this is exactly what everybody didn't need to have happen. The points championship leader right now has taken over the lead in this race. And there is heavy smoke coming out of the number seven of Rick Johnson. Rod Millen with 316 points coming into tonight, looking to pad that now. His truck, in various stages of disrepair, now has the white flag. Meanwhile, at the top of turn four, a big pileup that finally unscrambles, and it leaves the Iron Man the worst for wear. It appears that Ivan Stewart is out of this race. Well, he's also taken out a whole section of the hydro barrier. And Johnson is, I mean, he couldn't do a better job if he was spraying for mosquitoes. Meanwhile, up front, Rod Millen. There he is, what's left of his truck. In first place, Johnson really smoking now behind him in second. It is Millen who will take the checker. Johnson will limp in in second place. And Rob McCachran, fighting off Roger Sr., will finish third. There's our winner in heat race number two in the Toyota from Newport Beach. It's Rod Millen. Conoco's Rumble in the Rockies, Saturday, October 9th, Mile High Stadium. Call Ticketmaster or 303-290-TICS. No one said off-road racing was going to be easy. The Nelson and Nelson team has a big challenge on their heads right now. The thing is that Rick's motor went away in that heat race. Jim's motor is still good, so you have to take the motor out of Jim's truck, the motor out of Rick's truck, then take Jim's motor and put it in Rick. Yes, it's complicated. Both the motors are very hot. These guys have really got a rough bit of racing to do and racing the clock because they've got to be ready for the feature. Let's go back upstairs. Millen, as he widened his points margin, as you take a look now, 356 to 302 over Rick Johnson. That is a 54-point bulge. And remember, it was 31 when the evening started. 
All right, we're set to go. Main event in this, the Grand National Sport Trucks. It's been a riotous couple of heat races for these guys, and I'm sure that uh, they would like fewer on-track incidents, clean racing, and every single one of them would love to walk home with that trophy. Well, the interesting starting lineup has Walker Evans and Roger Mears scheduled for the front row, but Roger Mears has not answered the bell. So the number four of Roger Mears not going to make it to the main event. In row two, Ivan Stewart and Rob McCachran. There's a good shot of Rob still looking for his first main event win for the Rough Riders. Rick Johnson and Rod Millen. Millen, the leader in the points. Johnson second. They're side by side in row three. Roger Mears Jr. And Danny Thompson in row four, Jeff Ward and Jimmy Johnson in row five, and Jimmy Nichols in row six. They've done some major work to Rick Johnson Chevrolet. You remember it smoked in that second heat race, but apparently Rick Johnson Chevy, okay, good to go for this for the main event. And Walker Evans is the man in front who takes off. A late entrant onto the track is the Budweiser of Roger Sr. So Sr. comes storming through as this race begins. He's all the way at the back, but he's in the race. And Roger Mears Jr. is over on his side, as that's going to bring out a full course yellow. We'll have to re-rack it again. And these guys still haven't gotten the idea that this is supposed to be a sprint race and not tag team. It must be a full moon. That's the only way I can describe this. Look at the number three of Rob McCachran. He gets a complete 180, stays on the race course. Then the number six of Roger Mears Jr., he's gonna come into view and he's gonna catch a tire and watch what happens as he ends up going over on his side right there. And from that point on, Jr.'s along for the ride as he gets a little assist from Rod Millen. Millen had nowhere to go. And uh, Marty, because of uh, some uh, consultation with rough driving, apparently now it is Rob McCachran and Ivan Stewart who have gone to the front of the pack and they forced the Mears gang to the back. So on the restart, the Iron Man has assumed the lead. Second Rob McCachran on him. Second place, yes. Rob McCachran, third place, Rick Johnson, fourth, Rod Millen. A very, very tight turn two. And the Iron Man has really put some distance between himself now and McCachran. Millen's gotten around Rick Johnson for third. Yeah, there's our, our inboard camera with Rod Millen, the uh, points leader. Parts flying off on the track now as the race gets in this. The Grand National Sport Truck. Out for Roger Mears Sr. He's got the hood up in his face. And his hood. Now, Danny Thompson drove at the L.A. Coliseum several years ago, just like that, and uh, that's why the rule was instituted, because for a safety standpoint, they want to make sure that uh, you take that piece off and then go back to racing. Ivan Stewart back up front. Oh, get a little nose heavy there. Uh, what I'm guessing here is Roger doesn't even know there's a black flag out because of that hope being right in his face. If he is, he's certainly not behaving like it is. He's down there by where he would go off to the pit. Well, he has to stop to go there. He's trying to get over to rough driving area, but uh, meanwhile, Ivan Stewart continues to lead this race by a big margin over Rob McCaffrey. Rod Millen is third, Ricky Johnson is fourth, and Roger... Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing is run on the dirt that they truck into the stadiums across America. At least it's supposed to be dirt. In Southern California, this year's rainy conditions made the track more like a mud bath. And as always, by the time we hit Las Vegas, the desert brings us a dust bowl. Temperatures soaring as high as 114 degrees this year. And it is the drivers, Rod Millen, Ivan Stewart, Rick, and Jimmy Johnson, and Roger Mears and their crews that have to adapt. And now we're at Denver's Mile High Stadium, and the thin air is coupled with temperatures at the other end of the spectrum. 36 degrees at race time. It's going to go down into the high 20s, and there is a chance of snow. And we'll see who has done their homework tonight as we bring you Conoco's Rumble in the Rockies. It's round eight of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Championship on ESPN.
ESPN, the world leader in motorsports coverage, welcomes you to Denver's Mile High Stadium, where the temperature is a very brisk 36 degrees at the home of the Denver Broncos and Colorado Rockies. But tonight, it's Conoco's Rumble in the Rockies, as it's round number eight of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series. Hello again, everyone. I'm Marty Reed, and it is going to be a very dramatic night because there's a championship at stake in Grand National Sport Trucks, but also because of the fact of the temperature as well as the fact that we are a mile in the air. Let me bring in my partner. It is Ralph Shaheen. And Ralph, the challenge facing these drivers and crews tonight is enormous. Oh, it really is, Marty. You know, we are here in Denver. We are in the heart of the Rockies, and we are way up in altitude. And that altitude is really going to mess with the engines here tonight. But the teams that have the electronic fuel management systems will be able to adjust. But the cold temperatures are not going to be tough for the drivers or the trucks, but tough for those crew members as they try to stay focused on the task at hand. Well, right now, as we look at Grand National Sport Truck action tonight, Toyota's got a virtual lock on their 10th Manufacturer's Championship, but the Driver's Championship is up for grabs. It is. They talk a little bit about the fat lady singing. Well, she's not singing just yet, but she's warming up backstage for Rod Millen. As you can see, he is sitting on top of Rick Johnson. He's got to get through tonight if he really wants to lock it down. But the guy to keep your eyes on is Ivan Stewart. He sits fourth. He's never finished worse than third in a Mickey Thompson Championship Series season. There's one other guy we got to watch tonight, Roger Mears. In five previous runnings of this event, he has won it three times. He's trackside with our Bart Kendall. Bart? If I had to call a favorite for tonight's event, I'd have to choose this man to my left, Roger Mears Sr. Roger has won this event three of the five years it's been run here. He's also had a lot of success a little south here in Colorado at Pikes Peak. You've won that event three times. Has your success at Pikes Peak, did that help you become successful here at Mile High? Yes, it definitely did. Yeah, we uh, got to, you know, learn more about uh, how to put compression into motors and, and uh, jetting and that kind of thing. So I do definitely think uh, in the beginning it helped. Now these guys have caught up to us, you know, because uh, they all figured it out so I don't think we had the, quite the advantage we used to have how about tonight how do you feel about your chances feel real good about tonight uh, I could feel better we lost the motor early in practice and we got a little softer motor in there so we'll be down on power a little bit but uh, our, bu our bud Conoco trucks are running real good well the Denver Broncos have a definite home field advantage when they play in mile high I'd have to say he's the home team tonight let's take a quick lap around the mile high circuit the first thing you'll notice about the track here at Denver is that it's all one lane. No split lanes here in the Mile High Circuit. Once underway, you go through a quick washboard section and the first of two right-hand corners. This one's just a sweeper. Over a big jump and down to turn number two. This leads you into the fastest section of the racetrack. As you go over the two main jumps to the end of the main straightaway, you will approach speeds of 65 miles an hour. Through turn three in a rhythm section. Down to turn four, another left-hander, and a variation of that very same rhythm section. When you come to turn five, it is the only other right-hander. As you exit turn five, it's over one more section of the rhythm jumps down to turn six. The final hairpin would send you back over two jumps and a lap here at Mile High Stadium. Well, everybody's bundled up for the first heat race tonight as Conoco's Rumble in the Rockies is about to begin with Grand National Sport Truck action. And what's going to be interesting, Ralph, is back in row number four, the two fast qualifiers. There he is, Rod Millen, right alongside the man in second place, number seven there, Rick Johnson. Those two, of course, were the fast qualifiers, so they will invert them. And look at this guy, Roger Mears. We talked about it, the Mears magic here in Denver. Three wins out of the last five times. Series has visited Mile High Stadium. Gary Scheimer sets the field and we're underway at Mile High Stadium. Who's going to have the horsepower through turns one and two? It looks to be Jimmy Johnson. Well, here's the high speed section and we'll see them for the first time at full speed, reaching speeds of 65 miles an hour before you get to that corner. Two and three abreast as they came down there, and you can't take the corners three abreast so far. Everybody clean. Remember, if you were with us at Las Vegas, it was literally a demolition derby in the first heat, trying to get sorted out through a couple of tight corners. That is the tightest corner that the series runs on. Here it's more wide open, and the benefits are being or paying big dividends, Ralph. They sure are right now for the Chevy trucks. There you see the battle back in second place. That in truck number 11 is Jeff Ward, and behind him in the number four, Roger Mears Sr. As we watch them sweep through down by our barrier camp, there's that battle for second raging on. 
on to turn number three. Jimmy Johnson, meanwhile, is wide up, and he's gone. He's way out in front. <laughs> this is the best battle on the track. The one question I have for team owner John Nelson is, if this truck's having gremlin problems in the number 14, I want to know what they are, because he is cannon shot out in front of this field. Roger Mears ducks underneath Jeff Ward, and the experience of Mears, he takes over second place. One of the things that Wardy's going to have to get adjusted to is he's about to almost lose third place. He's getting hounded now by Ivan Stewart. Wardy's going to have to get used to the sides of those trucks. He is used to running on motorcycles, and it was one of the biggest adjustments for Rick Johnson, getting used to the fact that he has different body panels around him they have to adjust to he's made a tremendous adjustment to this truck and he says once you figure out oh. where the truck is you're okay and we've got walker evans no jeff ward over on his side down in turn number five and that will bring out a full course yellow let's take a look at how it happened to jeff ward as they went down into turn number five the only other right hander Zip, right up and over the barrier. And again, Marty, that's a part of him just learning the boundaries of that truck and where those barriers are. Looking back at the back of the pack, that's Jimmy Nichols. We'll work our way forward. There is what's left of Jeff Ward's vehicle. And the restart of heat race number one is underway. And Jimmy Johnson now has Roger Mears right on his back bumper. And we're going to see if Chevy Thunder can pull away from the Budweiser Conoco Nissan one more time. Down through turn number three. Still pretty much single file, although Walker Evans trying to work inside Ivan Stewart. Right there you see him, but Ivan able to shut the door. Boy, he, Jim, Jimmy's doing a good job. He really charged hard into those first couple of corners to try and reopen up that lead. You can see how much they get bounced around inside the trucks. So Jimmy Johnson again with, uh, boy, traffic coming after him. And there you saw Rick Johnson. He's got damage to the right front quarter panel of his Chevrolet, and he is falling back. Oh, no, Jimmy Johnson, our race leader, has gone over in turn number three. So Jimmy Johnson unable to capitalize on his early lead, hands it right to that man, Roger Mears. Here's the replay. Let's take a look. There you see that's Ivan Stewart of the two, and he did. He just went in real hot, and he caught it, tipped it over a little bit, caught a bit of a rut. The weight got shifted over to the right side of the truck, and there was nothing he could do but let it roll over. We're ready for the restart now in heat race number one. Jimmy Johnson at the back of the pack. Roger Mears, who has dominated this event over the years, winning three out of the five times that this tour has stopped here in Denver's Mile High Stadium. Laps are winding down, two remaining. And you're right, McCachron really coming on strong, giving the Iron Man all he can handle. Look at the truck in the rhythm section. Look how it gets through there. The problem is, can he there make it, it is, stick right, right there. there? That's the move. Now it's Ivan's turn on the left side. He'll have the inside corner, but no, Ooh. they get into each other, and Ivan, yes, will be able to get around the corner and hold on to second place. But in the meantime, Roger Beers has opened up now a seven-truck truck length lead. Boy, Rob McCachron had the right idea, Marty. He just ran out of straightaway to, to really secure the deal. Now I think he's going to run out of time as far as catching him with just one lap to go. Let me correct myself one more time. You're going to see Rick Johnson's truck right there. He has refired the motor and is oh. limping around. And, and that could be a problem for Mears. Mears has got a big problem. He got sideways over the rhythm section. He's going to have a duel with Ivan Stewart down the straightaway, heading into turn number five, six. And, and here comes McCachron. McCachron also in this in a three-truck battle with one lap coming up. The white flag will come out this time around. Oh, this could be good. Here comes the contact. You know it's coming. Heading past what will be the finish line and Gary Scheimer, final lap. Roger Mears, Ivan Stewart, Rob McCachron, and Walker Evans. Boy, these are three of the most determined drivers in our series, and none of them want to give up an inch, and they're going to fight for every bit of this chunk of Baja territory. Boy, Mears, all of a sudden, after having some great handling, has had a oh, couple there of... Oh, no, Ivan Stewart is up and over. Rob McCaffrey gets into him, and I'm sure Rough Driving is going to be taking a look at that. It is going to be Roger Mears taking the checkered flag. We'll wait as another truck has gone over, and that was Rob McCaffrey. So we'll sort that out for you as you see the checkered flag for 
Roger Mears Sr. Then Walker Evans in second. Roger Mears Jr. crosses the line third, but we're going to have to wait and see how this all sorts out because Ivan Stewart and Rob McCachran are both sitting on their side. King of Beers. Now, here's Bart Kendall. When you ask the drivers if they like this track here at Mile High Stadium, they always give you a big smile and a thumbs up because as racers are, they love speed and this is the fastest track they'll race on all year. What does this mean to them? Well, it's going to put a premium on braking, also nice precise driving as they will be sliding out to the very edge of the barriers at pretty high speeds. Also, extremely long straightaways. As you can see right now, I'm standing on the front straightaway. It's over 100 yards long. The reach speed's almost up to 50 miles an hour. Wouldn't John Elway and the Broncos like a receiver with that kind of speed? You notice the NFL logo on the field. That is the home of the Denver Broncos, and uh, they call it Wade's Place now. The name is certainly familiar, Jeff Ward. He's worn the number one plate seven different times in Supercross action in his 15-year career. But now it's number 11. He's made the switch to four-wheel stadium off-road racing, driving with Walker Evans. After 15 years on the back of a Kawasaki, Jeff Ward has made the jump to off-road truck racing, joining forces with Walker Evans and his Dodge racing team. In his first Mickey Thompson Stadium off-road race at Salt Lake City, Jeff came home third in the main event. But his strong finish should be no surprise. After all, he is the only person ever to win all four Supercross divisions. Well, I think racing's racing. I think the mentality of a driver, a rider, has got to figure out what the driver in front of him is going to do and anticipate moves. And uh, on the track, you know, we got the jumps. And what I've noticed is uh, in the trucks, when you go to miss something, I'm tensing up like it's going to hurt, and it doesn't hurt. So that fear factor is gone, and you can just let it hang out, and you can um, just bang trucks and not worry about any injuries. There is no doubt Jeff has the talent to be a force in off-road racing. In his second event at Las Vegas, he qualified one-tenth of a second slower than his living legend boss. Eventually, you know, I'll get to where I can, uh, I'll know more about the truck and what to expect. Right now, I'm just driving by the seat of my pan. I'm not worried about the setup. I'm going walk, walk or do all that and put it on my truck and uh, just learn and hopefully I, I can go into next year and then go for a championship. So it will be a lot of fun watching Jeff Ward, not only in his progress through tonight, but throughout his stadium off-road racing career. Well, the temperature is dropping, but the battle for the points championship continues to heat up in Grand National Sport Trucks. It is Rod Millen on top now. Rick Johnson has a dismal performance in heat race number one. The margin is now 390 to 322. Rob McCachran in third at 313. Ivan Stewart in fourth at 305. But there's been a shift at the bottom of the heap in sixth place now. Roger Mears Jr. has been bumped out of sixth by Walker Evans. There you see Jimmy Johnson duct tape holding a lot of those pieces together. A lot of damage to that vehicle in the rollover and heat eight race number one, but at least he's better off than Danny Thompson. Thompson should be in front of him, and he is not going to make the call for heat race number two. The green flag waves, and we're underway. That's Roger Mears Jr. on the outside. Jimmy Johnson, Mears Jr. heading for turn number two. It'll be Mears Jr., then Johnson, then Ivan Stewart, and then Jeff Ward. Down to the end of the very fast section. He's now into the tighter portions. Ivan Stewart's moved into second place. Jimmy Johnson's now third. Mears Jr. in front. Jeff Ward doing a fine job of holding on to fourth place. Then back further, it's Rob McCachran and Walker Evans. Then Rick Johnson. Well, there's a ton of congestion back behind these three, but up front, they have really spaced themselves out. Now it's a question of can anybody close on anybody? Roger Mears Jr. down into turn three. Now you're on board with Jimmy Johnson. Johnson in third and looking to close in on Ivan Stewart, who is running in second in the Toyota. So there is your leader now, Roger Mears Jr. And right behind him, Ivan Stewart, followed by Jeff Ward. Action behind him, getting a little sideways between Walker Evans, Roger Mears Sr., and Rob McCaffrey. Marty, I've watched the number 11 of Jeff Ward. He is really charging to the front here. He has come right up on the backside of Ivan Stewart, and Wardy is really figuring out this Dodge truck. He's got a good rhythm going, and he's going to be giving the Iron Man some fits here before this heat is over. 
they're on the back stretch, which actually uh, works as the starting line area, then through the quick, quick turn one complex. Here is turn two, and this is what is the finish line of the race course. Oh, oh and Jeff Ward. Ward takes a right turn hard into the hydro barrier. I don't know if somebody turned into him or pushed him, but we've got a full course yellow as Jimmy Johnson gets swept up in it, as does Rob McCachran. Watch Jeff Ward, he carries so much speed into this corner, the rear end gets out, hits the hydro barrier and sends him nose first, way up into the barriers, all the way up into the railing and collects Jimmy Johnson. Let's keep finishing races, Ralph. Well, he is doing exactly what he has to do. We know he would like to win, but it's finishing to win the championship that's most important. Green flag drops from Gary Scheimer. We're underway again. A lot of action down in the turn number two. Not only is the top speed so phenomenal on these machines, but the zero to 65 speed, as you said, just 100 yards long or 100 feet long, and they get to it in a hurry. And here comes a challenge for the lead. Oh, nice turn by Ivan Stewart. Ivan, and now, Mears Jr. with a good inside line on this turn. Door handle to door handle. Jr. and the Iron Man. And they are still side by side. It can't last much longer. There's too many turns coming up. That was some very fabulous driving, Marty. Two drivers who are going at it very, very hard, but very cleanly. Yeah, you notice Neither they, of the drivers was really leaning on each well, other. Well, you notice they all still have their uh, side panels? That's amazing. I mean, it is so tight in some of these corners. They usually rub it off of each other. But uh, you're right, Ralph. A very clean set of maneuvers by both drivers. Rob McCachran in third place. Fourth is now Rick Johnson. We can tell you that Jimmy Johnson has retired the number 14 Chevrolet. Rob McCachran trying to get back in the thick of this one to see if he can make something happen. And Roger Mears Jr., one reason why he's being able to hold off Rob McCachran is because McCachran is driving so hard that he's not driving as smooth as he needs to to make up the difference. White flag is out for the Iron Man. Now, we also should tell you Roger Mears Sr. is out of this race. We better hope it's not a motor. He was on his backup motor after practice and qualifying today. In fact, he won heat net race number one with the backup backup motor, but he is stalled at turn two, so we'll keep our eyes and ears posted to see what happens there between the heat and the main. It looks like Ivan Stewart is going to take heat race number two for Team Toyota. He's only got one more left-hand turn, and it's coming up here. The Iron Man will look right at Gary Scheimer's checkered flag. It'll be the number six of Roger Mears Jr. second, and the number seven of Rick Johnson third. Ivan, tell me a little bit about how you made that pass on Roger Mears Jr. to take over the lead. Well, the, the, I tell you, Ralph, the, the, the track is fantastic. The only problem is passing is very, very difficult. You work on a guy, you watch him, you watch him, and say, where's he a little bit weak? And this happened to be the spot I thought I could get him, right down there on the inside. And if I could get a good drive coming out of that corner, I figured I'd have him. Although he did stay with me here for a little bit, uh, but it worked out good. The Toyota's working fantastic. BF Goodrich tires, we've got to really find that right tire combination. Right now, I'm good. If it gets a little damper, it could be different. So we'll watch the track. Ah, uh, but you got two wins out of the last three. Maybe uh, three for four later on tonight. Good luck. Thank you very much. After watching the Mickey Thompson series, you might think it must be extremely rough on the drivers. Although it is no walk in the park, it's a lot smoother than you might think because of the sophisticated suspension system on these trucks. This is the front of the Nelson & Nelson Chevrolet. This is the shock right here, the shock canister or reservoir right here. This red thing right here is the spring, which is a lot longer than you find in a standard truck. And these are what we call limiter straps, which keep the shock absorber from traveling too far. Now, I think most teams will agree that the proper combination and preparation of the different suspension components is the key to a race-winning truck. Well, a stadium truck racing differs greatly from uh, any other forms of motorsport. The sophistication on today's stadium shocks are that uh, you have a chrome molly can, approximately 14 to 21 inches of travel, a silicon bronze piston, a reservoir that holds extra oil and nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas is being in there to keep the oil cool. 
What I have sitting in front of me is the lightning rod shock here. This external canister here is half filled with nitrogen gas, half filled with oil. The oil is then pumped up into the body of the shock absorber. These four things right here are called external bypass tubes with valves here. And what this adjusts is the rebound and bump of the shock absorber. This long one here adjusts the rebound. These three adjust the bump. The long one here affects how the truck travels over the larger jumps. This medium length one down here affects how the truck travels over the medium sized bumps. And this small one right here affects how the truck travels over the rumble strip type bumps. The performance of this shock is so amazing that one of the most successful road racing teams, the CompTech Acura team, recently attended one of these races because they wanted to find out how to apply this technology to their road racing cars. Basically, what our objective is to try to make the cars as drivable as possible, meaning we've got to take all the obstacles on the course and make it so that the driver doesn't feel them. If we can give him that ride that's a Lexus ride that says everything feels good to me, he's going to drive as fast as he can until he's uncomfortable and back off. And that brings us to the main event. Going to put you on the spot. Who do you like? I think it's pretty easy, really. I think it's Ivan Stewart. He's been the most consistent driver all night long. He did win heat race number two, and he was real close to winning heat number one. We are ready for the main event. Conoco's rumble in the Rockies has come down to this moment. flag waves from starter Gary Scheimer and this race is underway. Pedal to the metal. Ivan Stewart's in row two. Rob McCachran bumps momentarily with Roger Mears Jr. It costs him two positions. It's now Mears Sr., Mears Jr., Ivan Stewart, Rod Millen. That's your top four. You know, we haven't seen much out of Rod Millen tonight, and it's going to be interesting to see just how hard he charges here in this final. Rob McCachran, we know, will run hard. He's trying to come up from behind him right now. Also, don't forget, Ivan Stewart's in passing is very tough. You really have to watch and set the guy up in front of you. Well, remember, the magic number for Rod Millen is 85. If he comes out of here with 85 points or more, he has clinched the second straight driver's championship in his career here on the Mickey Thompson Tour. Ivan has got to get rid of Roger Mears Sr., make that junior now, if he wants a shot at Roger Mears Sr., because he's got to get by junior and then real senior back in and then set him up for a pass. Well, the other thing to remember here, and you better believe there's some team tactics, Mears Jr. is going to do everything he can to keep Ivan Stewart behind him. Roger Mears Sr. has won this event three times out of the five prior runnings. He could go four for six. There's Jimmy Johnson. We're watching him as he works that steering wheel. That's the view out front. But look at the grip. It's not real hard. He's just loose on the steering wheel, just working it smoothly. We're into the high-speed section, over the washboard area, through the sweeper, two big jumps. This is turn number two. Here's the high-speed section. Let's also tell you now, as you see back behind Ivan Stewart, Ricky Johnson has moved ahead of Rod Millen. That's what he needs to have happen, to have any chance heading into the final round at San Francisco's Candlestick Park. But here comes Rod Millen back. You can see him back in the side there, uh, going door to door. And this could make a difference for the Iron Man if RJ gets in the midst of this and starts messing around. Here comes the Iron Man. All right, we're going to find out just how much and Ivan Stewart. And Rod Millen just how much Ivan Stewart has left because Roger Mears has a full straightaway lead. There's the margin. You can see as they go past the barrier camp. Right now, the number four of Roger Mears is in the front and holding on to it. We can tell you Rob McCaffrey was that Ford that you saw stalled right by the finish line. That was a hard bounce right there for Mears. Ivan Stewart looking to force Mears into a mistake. Two of the greatest names in off-road racing going after each other, nose to tail. Oh, oh, they got together Ivan, there. Ivan gives him a little nudge from behind. No harm, no foul. But he's very much the gentleman in it, Marty. He backed off instead of sending him all the way around. But here comes Rod again. And Rod also backed out right there, and I'm surprised at that. He had an opportunity to really stick his nose in. RJ coming inside of Rod Millen as they try to make the challenge for third with one to go. And he was unable to pull it off. All right, Roger Mears. Remember, he has won this three out of the five years that has previously been held here at Mile High Stadium. 
Ivan Stewart's won two out of the last three events on the tour. Who's going to take the checkered flag? Just a couple of turns left to go. Hard left-hander, 180 degrees. Ivan not able to get any of ground there. This is going to be a drag race to the finish. That was his favorite passing point right there. Can he maybe make something happen in this last tight corner? Here they come. Does he leave the door open? No. It's going to be Roger Mears. Four out of six years. Mears wins the Rumble in the Rockies. Ivan Stewart, second, third place, goes to Rod Millen. Rick Johnson will finish fourth. What a great race. What a great win at the Conoco Rumble in the Rockies. That's just absolutely amazing, and you did it with an ailing motor. How'd you do that? Well, with that, the motor ran good that time, uh, but we did lose two motors today. That's why my crew just did a heck of a job. The last motor we put in just ran super, obviously. What is it about you and the Mile High Stadium as you held up Ivan Stewart in a tremendous battle? Well, Ivan, Ivan uh, was definitely keeping me honest, and he was a real gentleman. I want to thank him for that. He could have given me some more trouble than he did, and... Uh, I want to thank him. He did that was super. Uh, do you think now maybe we will see victory number five when we come back here for the seventh time? Hey, we'll take them any way we can get them, and uh, I love winning here at Denver. Uh, obviously, it's been very good for us, and uh, we can't wait to come back. Roger Mears Sr., winner once again at the Mile High Stadium. Let's take another look at tonight's winners of the Conoco Rumble in the Rockies. At the main event in Denver, in Sport Truck, it goes to Roger Mears. Our camera is made possible by your friends at Chevrolet, BF Goodrich, American Racing Custom Wheels, Goodyear, and Nature's Recipe Pet Food. Bud Track Back, sponsored by Budweiser. Winner's Circle and Restart, sponsored by Conoco. Barrier Camera compliments of Dick CPEC and Rancho Suspension. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing has been brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. And by Toyota Motorsports, where technology on a fast track is built into every Toyota. And by new advanced high-tech formula Quaker State Motor Oil. It's formulated for today's high-tech engines. It never fails. The drivers and riders on the Mickey Thompson circuit bang on each other all season long. And even after eight stadium races, the championships are still to be decided. And they're as close as when they started the season back at Anaheim. The best example is in Ultracross. Sean Kalos and Larry Brooks both ride for Yamaha. That's where the teamwork ends. Sean crashed in that last race at Mile High Stadium, closing the gap to one point with Larry Brooks and opening the door on a great final round here in Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Stadium racing, Mickey Thompson style, is next on ESPN. Hello again, everybody. I'm Marty Reed, working alongside with Ralph Shaheen, and we are down to the final round of the 1993 Stadium Off-Road Racing season, and a lot is at stake, Ralph. Boy, there really is. There is still a driver's championship to be decided. Take a look at the points for the Grand National Sport Trucks. As you can see, Rod Millen has a pretty good shot at it right now. He will probably lock it up here tonight, but the battle is for second. Ivan Stewart and Rick Johnson tied for second as we go into the heat races tonight. The old veteran against a young lion. This will be a war between those two. Rod Millen needs only 10 points to mathematically clinch the championship. But the battle for second, as Ralph pointed out, is going to be hotly contested. And, of course, we're still going to be focusing our attention also on the ultra cross battle. This, Ralph, has turned into a one-point contest between two friends. Can you believe this? We've done eight rounds. These two riders have been the best of friends since their mini bike days. And as Marty points out, just one point between the two of them. They are really getting tense down in the pits as well, Marty. As you know, being the best of friends, neither one wants to lose out to the other. So they will be really going out of here tonight hammer and tongue. Well, the one thing we should also point out is Yamaha has clinched the Manufacturers Championship, so the team orders are off the board. These two will be able to go after each other. Let's get ready for tonight's first race. Let's take one lap around Candlestick Park. As you leave the starting line, you get hard in the gas early because it's wide open through turns one and two. 
do the rhythm section and lean on the guy to the outside of you as you sweep through turn number three. Over the jumps and hard on the brakes for the first of the two hairpins at turn number four. Back on the gas, quick on the brakes when you get to turn five. As you get out of five, you got to get easy on that gas to get the wheels to stick to the ground to rocket you over the jumps and down to turn six. Six is by far the most important corner here at Candlestick. If you hit this right, you'll carry a lot of speed onto the fastest section. Out of turn six, over the big jump, sweep through seven, and you've completed a lap at Candlestick Park. We're getting ready now for Grand National Heat number one, the final round of the 1993 season. And the guys we're going to be watching back in row number four with the inverted starting position, there is Rod Millen. Remember, he needs 10 points to clinch the championship. In front of him is the battle for second place. Rick Johnson in the number seven Chevy Thunder. And then all the way up in the next row, there is Ivan the Iron Man Stewart. Those two are tied, 350 points each. And somebody is going to have to give Give some ground before this night is over, Ralph. And we're ready to go racing. The green flag flies and we're underway. San Francisco's Candlestick Park. And immediately, Roger Mears Sr. jumps out to the early lead. Junior right behind him. And Rick Johnson gets around Ivan Stewart as they head down into turn number four. Already we're seeing a lot of leaning on each other as we go through those very tight sections. Some of the drivers going three wide as they try to funnel through these very tight hairpins. Now on to, out onto that very fast section of racetrack as they come out of turn number six. It is wide open through here. The drivers will not touch the brakes on these trucks until they get to the very far end of the racetrack down towards the first of the hairpins right and, here. And really this does a lot for Roger Beer that dirt tracking maneuvering. He's an old dirt tracker himself. Now, the battle for second place. Roger Mears Jr. right in front of Rick Johnson. Johnson has the position by two spots over Ivan Stewart right now. He is trying to get more ground between he and the Iron Man. RJ is looking for a way to get around Roger Mears Jr. at this point as we go inside with Rick Johnson. Look how he's driving with just one hand most of the time through those very fast sections. But up front, Roger Mears Sr. Brother Rick is here tonight among the crowd in attendance. And so far, the man who won at Denver is staking a claim to making it two in a row. He has really been on a tear this year. Roger Mears has two wins coming into this round. Looking for three, and there is that battle for second and third. That is Mears Jr. in the number six. The seven is Rick Johnson. Rod Millen is right behind him, and Ivan Stewart finds himself all the way back in fifth. That's where he qualified today. He just wasn't getting around the racetrack as quickly as he wanted. And he's still struggling, but these two are doing exceptionally well. And this man is just amazing how well he's getting around this course tonight. I, I think I know what Ivan's problem is, Ralph. Take a look at his left rear tire. He's got a tire that is going down. I think it's on the inner liner already. His left rear. We'll see if we can pick it up for you. Here's that battle for second and third as we keep our eyes on Ivan. These two, now RJ is not able to really get around him yet. There's a good look at Rod Millen. That Toyota is running fine. Rod uses a bit of a rally style to his driving technique, which is much different than what we're seeing out of Roger Mir Sr. Look how Rod goes through the corners. The truck never really slides as much. You see Rick Johnson got around Roger Mears Jr. He now moves up into second place. And Rod Millen does the same. So a problem for Roger Mears Jr. And meanwhile, Ivan Stewart trying to get around and up to that pack cannot do it. He does have a flat left rear tire. Well, he's got to try to get another position if he can, just to stay as close as he possibly can to the points to Rick Johnson as we work our way through the night. Here we are on the final lap, and look at how tight it is. Rod Millen can factor into this right here as they come through that hairpin. Well, Rod Millen, with this third-place finish, will clinch the championship. All he has to do is stay in third. So here is Roger Mears taking the heat win, second place to Rick Johnson, and the championship to Rod Millen as he now clinches the 1993 Grand National Sport Truck title, becoming the first man since his teammate Ivan Stewart to win back-to-back -back championships, and the Ironman did it in 1983 and 84. Hey, looking at two guys, Rick Johnson here congratulating the 1993 champion.
Rod Mellon, congratulations. Rod, you finished third in the heat, but I guess you won the war. Uh, yeah. You must feel good to win the championship back-to-back. -back. It, it's been a great year. It's been a tough year, but, you know, the Toyota's been real strong. I've had a great team behind me, Cal Wells and their whole group supported me all year and given me the best truck out there, so it makes my side of it so much easier. I guess now that you've won the championship, the second heat race in the main event, you can really go have a good time and go for it, huh? Well, we were trying hard on that one, you know. The championship I sort of disregarded. I wanted to go race by race, and uh, it's working out. The track is great here tonight. It's the fastest track on the series this year. A little hard to pass, and you know, but some great guys to get past, but it's going to be great for the next heat in the main. He's a happy guy. Back to you guys. Well, just part of the 500 free tickets that the Mickey Thompson Entertainment Group distributed to the Bass Ticket Foundation. This is a group here in San Francisco that tries to take underprivileged children to different types of events. They can be cultural activities. They can also be sporting activities like tonight's off-road racing championship. It's a great program. The Mickey Thompson Entertainment Group, happy to be involved. 500 young people that wouldn't have been able to see tonight's action are here thanks to the Bass Ticket Foundation and the Mickey Thompson Entertainment Group. We're ready now for heat race number two in Grand National Sport Truck Action. I'm Marty Reed along with Ralph Shaheen and Bart Kendall. We're in Candlestick Park, San Francisco, the final round of the 1993 season, and there are points positions still at stake. We told you right after heat race number one, Rod Millen had clinched the championship, but look what's happened to second place. A 10-point margin now. Rick Johnson has over Ivan Stewart. Rob McCachron only 10 points ahead of Roger Mears. So second, third, fourth, and fifth places are still up for grabs in the 1993 Grand National Sport Truck Competition. On the front row will be the two Dodges of Jeff Ward and Walker Evans. Danny Thompson and Jimmy Johnson will be in row number two. And then Riven Stewart and Roger Mears Jr. in row number three. The green flag flies. Is the number 11 of Jeff Ward on the inside of his teammate and boss, Walker Evans. Oh, and a big. inside we go with Rick Johnson, and you can see him asking what is the deal as the battle continues up front. This will bring out a full course yellow as we've had a three-truck collision down in turn number three that involved, involved both the Chevy Thunders of Jimmy and Rick Johnson and the number four of Roger Mears. Watched in the middle of the pack as the Chevy trucks get together with the Mears gang in front of them. Things will get jammed up in a hurry. Jimmy Johnson with Roger Mears Jr., they get together. That throws Jimmy Johnson out of whack. He gets involved with Ivan Stewart and Roger Mears Sr. As Jimmy goes tumbling, his teammate runs right into Roger Mears Sr. From the in-car, this is what Rick Johnson sees. All he sees in front of him is a big red Budweiser truck. All right, here's how it's going to be on the restart. There you are on board with Rick Johnson. The two Dodges, Walker Evans, Jeff Ward, first and second, then Roger Mears Sr., then in fourth place, Rob McCaffrey. Fifth is Rick Johnson. Sixth is uh, Rod Millen. Seventh, Danny Thompson. And eighth place is Ivan Stewart. And he needs a lot of ground to cover. Walker Evans, Jeff Ward down through turn three. Mears trying to look inside on Ward for second place. Can't make it stick. Big oh, contact. There goes Two Ward. upside down. Ward and Mears both going over. And it brings out another full course caution. And we'll wait to see if there's any penalties handed out in this one. Roger Mears Sr., the number four, tries to get inside of Jeff Ward. In, in comes Rick Johnson. They all get together, and Wardy and Mears Sr. go upside down, and squeaking through brilliantly is the number three of Rob McEachran. Ivan Stewart's got a bit of a problem. The Ironman, and you're going to see how strong the Ironman is. Here we go. Technology on a fast track. This is called rip this thing off so I can go racing. Now, I don't know. He's steering with his legs. He does this on the freeway. I've ridden with him. He's got both hands up there trying to peel, peel this thing off, and he's turning the truck with his legs. And the big black flag has been given to the number two of the Ironman, Ivan Stewart. Listen to the crowd. They'll give him a big round of applause. They love the Iron Man in San Francisco. Here's the restart. The two Dodges still in front. That is Walker Evans and...
Jeff Ward. Ward did not cause the rollover, so he gets to stay in that position. Third is Roger Mears Sr. Look at Rob McCachron on the outside, trying to take two positions in one corner. Does not do it. He gets one of them, though, and he looks like he may get inside of Jeff Ward here as they turn in through turn number five. McCachron has been driving very aggressively. Look at this battle going on back here. That's Wardy in the 11, Roger Mears Sr. in the 4, and Rick Johnson in the 7 machine. And this is the battle up front from first and second. Walker Evans, your leader in the number 5, Dodd. And coming up behind him, the Ford Ranger, driven by Rod McCachron. There is the battle between Mears and Rick Johnson. Look at Rod Millen coming through. He's going to take a position away as well. Meanwhile, McCachron is closing down up front on Walker Evans. There is the difference between first and second. This time by, there will be two laps remaining. Does Walker Evans have enough horsepower to hold off the Ford of Rob McCachron? Remember, these two used to be teammates several years ago. Nothing Rob McCachron would love to do more than to beat the old master at his very own game. Well, there is no doubt about that, and he is certainly driving hard enough to find a way around Walker Evans. The thing about Walker, though, is he has got such a thick book on experience that on a racetrack like this, he can make it very, very difficult for you to get around no matter how hard you are charging. If anybody's going to be able to pull it off, though, this kid and Rob McCachron just might be able to do it, but he's going to have to get a lot closer oh. than that and not make such mistakes as he just did there. He just slid into the hydro barrier, scrubbed off enough speed that he fell about four truck lengths back. Now, that is third and fourth. That's Roger Mears Sr. He's got a loose hood as well. If that flies up into blocks his vision, he'll be black flag. And that was Rod Millen running with him in the number one Toyota, the new 1993 champion in this series. There's that battle again, and you can see that hood flopping around on the red Budweiser truck. It's a showdown between these two, Walker Evans and Rob McCachron. It's Dodge versus Ford. Way back in third is Roger Mears Sr. The bobble just a little while ago as they went through that section about a lap or so ago, I thought was going to make the difference. But look how McCachron is closed back up. And they're going to have to contend with Roger Mears Jr. They bump in there a little bit, Marty, and that is not going to be enough. With that bump, that will allow Walker to steal away. 54-year-old Walker Evans from Riverside, California, takes the checkered flag and wins heat race number two at the final round of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Championship here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Don't forget to mark Sunday, December 26th on your calendar, 3 p.m. Eastern, as we'll look back not only on the 1993 race season, but the last 10 years in a decade of racing on the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Tour. That's Sunday, December 26th. Fact is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Many of you might be wondering how a beautiful grass field that you see behind me here in Candlestick Park is transformed into a racetrack for the Mickey Thompson Off-Road Series. Well, as I take a couple steps to my left here, you see here construction is underway. They're putting in over 700 truckloads of dirt. That's 25 million pounds of clay-based earth that they bring in. And believe it or not, they do this in only two days. Now, some stadium managers and coaches of the football teams are a little bit nervous when they find out that all this dirt might be on their pretty little playing field. But believe it or not, in 11 years, there hasn't been one complaint about how the field was left. Quite a testimony to this portable chunk of Baja we're racing on tonight. It's come down to this, the final race of the 1993 season. Grand National Sport Trucks, the main event from Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Now remember, Ivan Stewart is now in jeopardy of being bumped out of third place. Rob McCachron only two points behind, 361 to 359. Rick Johnson is just about locked up second place behind Rod Millen, this year's champion. But Marty, the two times we've raced here at Candlestick, the only two winners, some guy named Ivan Stewart. He's got 17. He leads the all-time win list in Grand National Sport Truck action. And being in row two, don't count him out. Walker Evans and Roger Mears. They are swapping a little bit of paint down into three. Evans 
in second place behind Mears and Ivan Stewart on the outside. Ivan is, you know, of course, very frustrated from losing that hood in heat number two. He would like to close out the season and regain a little bit of his respect by winning here in this main event. It is Roger Mears leading at the end of lap number one, followed by Walker Evans, Ivan Stewart, then Rob McEachern, and Rod Millen. Roger Mears won the last time out at Denver. He is a two-time winner on the tour in 1993. Mears and his son will be back again next year with these same trucks, and they'll be going after the championship. Right now, Roger trying to make it two main event wins in a row. He won last time out in Denver. Oh, we've got two trucks tangled up back in the pack. The 14 of Jimmy Johnson is now smoking heavily. Terrible night for Jimmy Johnson, and just an exclamation point on the evening that he's going to have to suffer through the main with a smoking, beaten, and battered Chevy. Meanwhile, the action back up front. There's the margin between first and second. Roger Mears followed by Walker Evans. Boy, what Evans wouldn't give. Oh, and Ivan trying to tuck it on the inside, coming through. Turn number four. He can't make it stick, though, as the opposite direction, 180-degree turn, gives the advantage back to Walker Evans. You can see how much smoke is coming out of Jimmy Johnson's truck as our drivers try to negotiate through that section. And look at Ivan Stewart go flying literally by Walker Evans. What a daring move when you make the pass in midair. Boy, is he determined. Look at him go. Here comes Ivan Stewart right up on the back side of him now. They slow down coming through. I don't see full course yellow anywhere. I don't understand this, Marty. I don't understand it either. The lights are not flashing. Roger Mears has slowed down and everyone has slowed down behind him. The only truck that we see is Jimmy Johnson, Johnson stalled over on the far side of the track. And look at they're trying to wave him through, but I don't understand. And look at here Rob goes Ron McCackrett. He's going to outfox Ivan Stewart. I don't Can know what Can you happened. believe that? They all followed Roger Mears' lead. Marty, I am nowhere near as old as you, my friend, but in the few years I've been doing racing, I have never seen such a thing. This has never happened before. And right now, Rob McCackrick would take over in third place from Ivan Stewart if this were to hold up in the final standings. That is unbelievable. Roger Mears slowed down for the broken down vehicle of Jimmy Johnson and everybody followed suit. Well, here comes Ivan. He's charging again. Ivan is going to try to get around the youngster, Ron McCackrick, but that Ford is working real well. I'm still dumbfounded by that, Marty. <laughs> I think everybody is, and I bet you Ivan Stewart's just kicking himself. Well, I'll tell you, at this point, if Roger Mears can survive that and get lucky enough to get through that type of a situation, I'd rather be lucky than good on any day, and that might be enough for Roger to win. All right, let's set it for you. It's Roger Mears first, Rob McCachran second, Ivan Stewart third, Rick Johnson fourth, Rod Millen fifth. But, boy, the action between Look at Ivan, Ivan, here they come, down the straightaway. He is really gunning. He pumped and banged his way by Rob McCachran. He let Rob know he was there and he was coming through whether Rob wanted him to or not. And McCachran trying to come back. Now, can they catch up to Roger Mears? Oh, McCachran puts a nice move on the inside on turn four. And here comes RJ and Rodney Millen. Oh, this is a great way to close out a fabulous season. Mears has got to be loving this. These guys are banging on each other and letting him run away. The longer they fight side by side, the harder it's going to be to make up the ground up to Roger Mears. White flag is out. One more lap for Roger Mears. On board with Rick Johnson as he is in fourth place, trying to reel in Ivan Stewart. Ivan is in jeopardy of being bumped out of third place in the final standings. Lap traffic could play a factor here. Here comes McCachran, Marty. He is trying to set up Roger Mears Sr., and they do have the slower truck of Jimmy Nichols in front of him. He's not going to be able to do it. Mears has just got too much straight line. Ivan, We're one more time. Ivan, trying to move one on One more inside. challenge. Will it be Roger Mears? Yes, the checkered flag for Mears. And Rob McCachran second, Ivan Stewart third, Rick Johnson fourth, Rod Millen fifth. What a win for Roger Mears Sr. to cap off the 1993 season.
it was your 13th career win, your third of 1993. Congratulations on the victory, but I don't know any other way to ask this. What was going on when you guys just about stopped on the racetrack? Oh, well, we had a yellow, and uh, the yellow lights were on on the back stretch, and that usually means a full course yellow, so we all slowed down. Just luckily, somebody standing along the side of the course waved me on, or I'd have, they'd have passed me. Because up here, we couldn't see any of that, and Marty and myself were hunting all over for yellows, and then when Rob McCachran got on the gas, we thought you were done. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I, I didn't realize that till I just seen it, but... Uh um, yeah, I didn't know till I rounded that corner right there. I seen a, a official standing there, start waving us on. I thought, oh my gosh, this isn't a yellow. <laughs> well, this this Budweiser Conoco truck has been running so strong in the second half of the year. Can you maybe win a championship in 1994 with it? Well, I'm sure we can. Uh, if we'd have started out the season like we've ended up, I think we could start the season next year looking real good. And I really do want to thank Budweiser Conoco, Yokohama, and Bosch, all of our sponsors, and especially my team. Well, the 1994 season is just around the corner. We'll see you there. Very good. Thank you. We also want to congratulate our 1993 points champions, Rod Millen in Sport Truck, Larry Brooks in Ultra Cross, Jerry Welchel, who clinched along with Greg George at our eighth round at Denver, and Doug Eichner in a great battle in four-wheel ATV, and Tommy Croft, who did it in style, winning his seventh in a row. There are your champions for 1993. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing has been brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural. Proud to be your bud. And Toyota Motorsports, where technology on a fast track is built into every Toyota. And by BF Goodrich TA Tires, when you're ready to get serious. In-car cameras made possible by your friends at Chevrolet, American Racing Custom Wheels, Goodyear, and Nature's Recipe Pet Food. Bud Trackback, sponsored by Budweiser, the barrier camera compliments of Dick Sepek and Rancho Suspension. This has been a presentation of Bud Sports in association with ESPN.